kanye yaba amashuri yisumbuye ndetse na za kaminuza ni igikorwa rero tugiye gukurikirana mu kanya gatoka tarambiranye aho umukuru w'igihugu aza kubageza na kaza kuganiriza uru rubyiruko rukomeje kungurana ibitekerezo kuko iteza imbere ni mu gikorwa abahura mu kitwa Hanga Pitch Fest kugira ngo dusobanukirwe byinshi kuri iki gikorwa kuri gahunda turi kumwe n'umunyabanga uhoraho muri ministeri y'urubyiruko n'umuco bwana Ive iradukunda tubaha ikaze bwana Murakoze cyane ngira ngo turase ku ntego hanga pitch fest ku muntu yumvise ku nshuro ya mbere niki ni gahunda igamije iki murakoze cyane turishimye cyane ko uyu munsi ari umunsi by'umwihariko tugiye guha umwanya urubyiruko by'umwihariko abahanga udushya bihangira imirimo kugira ngo tugaragaze mu byukuri ibyiza barimo kudukorera hanga pitch fest rero ni gikorwa ministere yikora na buhanga no guhanga udushya ndetse na Rwanda Development Board twatangiye kugira ngo nyine dukore icyo narivuze cyo kugira ngo umuco wo guhanga udushya umuco kwihangira imirimo turabizi urubyiruko rwacu rufite inyota yo gukora cyane yo guhanga udushya uyu munsi rero twashyizeho ino hanga pitch festival ibaye bwa mbere ku uyu munsi pitariki 11 mwezi kwa 12 kugira ngo duhe urubuga rwa rubyiruko tubashe no kubatera inkunga n'imbaraga mu bikorwa byiza barimo barakora uyu munsi rero muraza kubona by'umwihariko batanu ba mbere ndashaka no kuzagaruka ku rugendo twanyuzemo kugira ngo tugere kuri uyu munsi anyuma ngira ngo aba batanu ba mbere baraza gutahana iki hari gahunda nyinshi ziriho nubundi zari sanswe zifasha urubyiruko rwihangira imirimo ruhanga udushya ngira ngo udutandukanyirize ihanga pitch fest iraza gufasha mu buhe buryo yo ese wa mbere araza kwegukana amafaranga angana iki urakoze cyane uko narimbi vuze twatangiye ikorwa ku itariki ya 3 kwa 11 twatangiye nabantu barenga 400 batanze imishinga yabo ariko kuva kuri aho 400 tujonjoramo imishinga irenga 40 tubatangira mahugurwa yamaze ibyumweru bigera muri bibiri aho twakuyemo abantu 25 imishinga 25 abo ngabo rero nabo barongeye barahugurwa mu buryo bwo kunonosora neza imishinga yabo no kugaragaza gahunda bafite yo kwiteza imbere muri abo ngabo niho havuyemo aba batanu tuza ko ni munsi bari buze kugaragaza imishinga yabo imbere y'umukuru w'igihugu imbere y'abari hano bose ariko by'umwihariko akanama nkemuramaka kakaza gukuramo uwa mbere uwa kabiri uwa gatatu uwa kane uwa gatano uwa mbere arabona igihembo cy'amafaranga kirenga kigera ku bihumbi 500 by'amadorari ngo ni miliyoni 500 z'amanyarwanda birumvikana ko ari amafaranga menshi ashobora kuba yafasha umushinga gutera imbere uwa kabiri arahabwa kandi ibihumbi 20 ngo ni nka miliyoni 20 z'amanyarwanda hanyuma uwa gatatu miliyoni 15 hanyuma uwa kane n'uwa gatano barabona 12500 hejuru y'amafaranga y'ibyembo bari bubone hari yongeraho kandi ubufasha bazajya babona nabafatanya bikorwa bacu mu iki gikorwa mu guteza imishinga y'imbere mu gukura nabandi babashora amari bashaka kwafasha gutera imbere tukifuza yuko rero iki kibabera intandaro yo kugira ngo ibikorwa byabo bitere imbere ugana PS reka tugushimire murakoze cyane reka namwe rero tubahikaze mukurikirane iyi hanga pitch fest giye kuba ku nshuro ya ya mbere ikaze rero mwese muri Kigali arena nubundi Hunger Pitch Fest uh, is a competition uh, that is targeting startups where we're looking to identify uh, the different startups that we have across Rwanda, looking at the different ideas that they are building, but also offering them a platform where they can showcase the different uh, innovations that they are working on, offering them an opportunity to have um, you know, peer mentorship and mentorship with um, other different organizations. And at the same time, we're also looking to provide them with training and business development services. At the highlight of this competition is also uh, cash prizes that are targeted towards helping these businesses grow. Uh, what excites me about Rwanda's innovation cash is that it's more engaged within young people. Young people are taking the lead and everyone is trying to innovate and people are trying to catch up because I think COVID has taught us that we really need to be innovative. And you see most young people are trying to, everyone has an idea, everyone has an, a creative and innovative idea. So that's really amazing. I think the future is much
much going to be much brighter. What excites me about the Rwandan innovation culture is that it's fast growing. There's a lot of uh, challenges that needs to be addressed here in Rwanda, so which gives a lot of room for us young entrepreneurs to come up with ideas and innovations that can actually contribute to the society, but also uh, create sustainable businesses. So beyond um, identifying this talent, um, we're also looking to you know categorize them because startups have different uh, growth stages. Um, you have those startups that are still at pre-seed level, you have those that are at seed level, and those that have uh, matured enough, they already have a prototype in place, they already have um, put their products and services on the market. And so being able to look at the different um, segments of uh, startups that they're in, and then designing uh, support uh, that they need uh, to really grow to the next level. All right. Now that is the journey. 400 of different startups applied. 25 were selected. Five are pitching tonight. And this is the moment. Before we welcome the team that is going to pitch, please allow me to welcome on stage the CEO of RDB, Claire Akamanzi, for her remarks. Thank you. Thank you, MC. Good afternoon, everyone. I want to recognize the Minister of ICT and Innovation, honorable ministers that are here present, the chairman of the Rwanda Development Board, and of course the judges who are going to deliver tonight what we are all waiting for. But most importantly, I want to recognize you, the young entrepreneurs that are full in this arena this afternoon. It's because of you that we are here to celebrate you. This is a very important day for us. Even though we're going to be seeing uh, five winners from a pool of over 400, for us it's a way to celebrate the talent that we see in Rwanda, the talent for innovation, the talent for entrepreneurship, the talent for hard work, commitment, and perseverance, because all the 400 startups that participated in this competition showed all of that. And for us as a country looking to develop uh, quickly and looking to driving not just prosperity but transformation of our economy, we know very well that we cannot achieve this without you. That's why today is extremely important for us because this, you are the future and you're the ones that are going to deliver Rwanda's economic transformation and social transformation uh, in the future. But I just wanted to say that it's not just about competition. Uh, for us at the Rwanda Development Board and the Government of Rwanda, the Ministry of ICT, for us it's building an ecosystem, a tradition, a culture of solving problems and becoming entrepreneurs. Today is just one element of that bigger strategy that we have as a country to support you to thrive every day when you go about your business. Let me just tell you a few things that we have in place to make sure that you succeed. A lot of times, you ask about access to finance. This is something that the government of Rwanda has been working very, very hard to make sure that you succeed, you get the funding that you require. Today, some of you will be winning our financial prizes, but please know that there are many other instruments we have in the country. The Business Development Fund that was put in place to support startups, the Rwanda Innovation Fund that recently uh, started, and apart from that, we've also made it easy for venture capitalists and angel investors to invest in you. We have a new investment code that gives tax incentives to investors who invest in you. That means that when they qualify, they don't pay dividend taxes on dividends, they don't pay withholding tax, they don't pay capital gains tax, 
and some of them even get exemption from corporate income tax. The idea is that we reduce the tax burden for them so they can put the money in your businesses. In addition to that, we have business development services, some by government through the BDF, but there are also many private business development advisory services today. So there's support to advise you how to write a business plan, how to strengthen your businesses, how to, be, how to market your products. These support services are there. Please take advantage of them. And when you create and innovate, one thing that we like to emphasize is please understand your intellectual property rights. Many times, some of you have very good ideas, but you don't register your trademarks, your patents, or your copyrights. Please visit RDB Patent Office, learn about your intellectual property rights, and make sure that nobody uses your intellectual property rights without your permission. I think that's extremely important, and we want to make sure that all of you keep that in mind as you innovate. But for today, we're here to celebrate the startups that win. Allow me to thank all the 400 that participated, you're already winners. The fact that you're the top 400 in the entire country already shows that you're a winner. Now, for those of you who are going to win uh, five, the last five today, I want to wish all of you success. And I know that even if you're not number one today, in many ways you're number one because you're the top in the country. So enjoy this afternoon and all the best. Welcome to this event. Thank you. This is the moment we've all been waiting for. Are you ready? And thank you so much, Claire, for your remarks. Are we ready? Are you ready to hear the pitches? Coming up first, we have Bag Innovation, led by Yusuf Mwadi. Yusuf, you're welcome to the stage. Thank you. My name is Yusuf Mwadi, and I'm the CEO of Bag Innovation. Uh, the name of the company and the product is Bag Innovation. We're solving a problem where university students do not, uh, are not able to find internships that can help them apply what they're learning in school with practical uh, work experience. So our technology uh, helps young people to work with real companies, gain real work experience, uh, but also feedback on their career journey. I am ready to present my idea to the judges. Awesome. Am I going to be seeing the slides? Difficulties of being number one. Yes, perfect. Great. Let's start over. Um, my name is Yusuf Murahoneza. I'm a Rwandan entrepreneur born and raised here, and I am the CEO of Bag Innovation. Today, I'm super excited because uh, it's not every day that you get an audience where you have ministers, you have educators, employers, and young people in one single space. I'm going to be talking about an idea. I'm going to be talking about a solution that we've developed at Bag Innovation that is contributing to solving one of the biggest problems that the African continent is facing. And that problem is youth unemployment. When youth unemployment exists in any market, it leads to a lot of different problems for any nation. One of those problems is an increase in crimes. We've seen countries such as South Africa uh, face a lot of problems when it comes to crimes because of youth unemployment. When youth unemployment exists in a country, it affects the country's economy because young people are not able to get jobs, so who's going to pay the taxes? So youth unemployment is a pressing issue that Africa is facing and it needs to be solved now. Not tomorrow. Ladies and gentlemen, in 2016, when I graduated from my high school studies, I wanted to find the best university here locally where I could study that would set me up for my career. After six months, I failed completely. Why? When I spoke to graduates, what they said was, I've graduated, I'm still failing to get a job. Interesting enough, when I spoke to employers, they mentioned two things. They mentioned, we have the jobs, but we're failing to find the people 
who are employable for these jobs. Secondly, something that was very interesting was employers had a bias that if you came from a certain university, they liked you better than another university. And this is a huge problem because one could ask himself, just because you went to a good university, does that mean you are fit for the job? After analyzing all these problems, I've decided to come up with a solution. But before we get there, let me dig deep into the problem. Yes. The problem and the reality on the market right now is that students are failing to find the internships that can help them practice what they're learning with, with what employers are looking for. This is a major problem because employers on average can only give 40 internships per year. But what is 40 compared to the number of graduates on the market? How are, we, how are these young people supposed to practice what they're learning in terms of practical experience? Universities, the traditional curriculum is not agile enough to keep up with the demands of the job market. If you are a finance student right now and you're learning finance, if you're a university student and you're learning finance right now, by the time you graduate in five years, if your professor hasn't been teaching you about cryptocurrency, when you graduate, your degree is going to be obsolete and you're going to face unemployment. Businesses, 75% of employers in Africa, of the top 50 companies, including the richest man in Africa, Aliko Dangote, once said, we're willing to pay significantly more to find the right people. Ladies and gentlemen, we have over 20 million young people entering the job market every year for the next two decades in Africa. As an employer, if you hire a fresh graduate with zero experience, it's going to take you six to eight months for them to become fully effective. In those six to eight months, if you're a small business, you're incurring a cost of over $1,200 for you to train them. Our solution is BAG, a digital platform that helps students and graduates to practice what they're learning in theory in the classroom with what the employers are looking for. How do we do this? We partner with employers to understand exactly what they're looking for in a fresh graduate, and we use that data to create modules and programs that students can solve on a day-to-day -day basis. By using our platform, students are earning real work experience that employers are looking for. Businesses are, face, uh, are benefiting from a low training cost when it comes to entry-level talents, and universities are achieving a high post-graduation employment rate. How does the solution work? Students sign up on our platform, they select a sector of interest that they want to work with, and by selecting the sector of interest, they're able to enroll with some of their favorite employer programs. After doing this, they can work on real tasks and real projects from the employer, receive feedback from both their employer and BAG Innovation, and they're able to gain the work experience, earn points, certification, and as well as increase their chances of being employable on the job market. This is how the platform looks like. The market opportunity is huge. The global education market in 2030 is valued at over $10 trillion. In Africa only, students and employers are spending about $4.7 billion on just earning an extra certification. We're targeting a market of over $1.2 billion just in the Sub-Saharan African market. We haven't been sitting still. We have been working. We have been pushing this solution in the market. And so far, we've had over 8,000 students benefit from our solution. We've been working with over 200 businesses and partners who are universities to deploy this solution in their universities. But one thing that we're most proud of is that we're able to create jobs for over 600 young people and change their lives. Thank you. E-learning is not the most fun or sexy thing for young people to do on a day-to-day -day basis. Nobody wants to learn. Gamification is the future of learning. We've partnered with one of the creators of the famous game Candy Crush to develop a gamification engine that can help our platform become more fun and enjoyable for young people to use. What is our business model? Young people 
Students, graduates use our platform for free. Employers pay $250 to access our platform where they can post these tasks, access the data that they're receiving from this platform, but also use it as a more advanced recruitment portal. Universities are interested in having a platform that integrates directly with their curriculum so that they don't have to worry about what is happening on the job market. Digitize their career centers, but also achieve post-graduation employment. We have competitors in the space of e-learning who are trying to do something similar. However, we distinct or we differentiate ourselves by being, having a strong focus on curriculum integration because we believe that for every single course a university student is learning, they have to have a practical exercise that they're taking up so they can increase their chances of being relevant in the job market. Gamification, strong brand, and strong partners who can help us deploy this product in various different markets. What is our go-to-market strategy? Our go-to-market strategy is going to be is brand-led, but also at the same time partnership-led. Working with the University of Rwanda helps us access the biggest university database in the country right now. We're working with the African Union has commended us by having the most innovative education technology in Africa, which gives us open markets to every single African country. We're working with Harambe, the Youth Employment Accelerator, doing amazing work in South Africa, here in Rwanda, trying to do the same thing. And we're trying to find other different partners who can help us scale this technology on a day-to-day -day basis. I cannot do this by myself, ladies and gentlemen. We have a team of over 11 people in the office working on deploying this solution to a lot of students in the country right now. We have a lot of experience when it comes to technology development in the educational space, in career development, but also the recruitment space. So we have a good combination to understand how to develop this solution. We're pitching for $50,000, and $50,000, we've been able to achieve all this impact with just an MVP ladies and gentlemen. With this $50,000, we're able to optimize the operations here in the country, develop the technology further, but also at the same time do a lot more marketing so every single student who's here can know about bag innovation. With this $50,000, we're going to be able to achieve 20,000 users by next year. We're able to have one of the biggest market share of young people in the country, but also increase our revenues drastically. Ladies and gentlemen, there is a reason why we call BAG. It stands for Building Our Generation. Our president, His Excellency Paul Kagame, once said, we need to build a generation of problem solvers and critical thinkers. BAG Innovation stands for Building Our Generation. I turn to you judges and I say, we have the team, we have the traction, and we have the passion to develop this solution. Thank you very much. Thank you, Yusuf. Thank you, Bug Innovation, for breaking the ice. So um, now we are started off. Um, Hello. I would like to invite uh, Ron. The thank you. Uh, thank you for that amazing presentation. Uh, thank you. I, I think uh, the problem you stated was very clear, but I'm curious to dive into the employer side of it. Um, you mentioned that they're going to be paying about 250, a few hundred dollars a month in order to access the platform, but I'm curious how you're going to incentivize them to actually work with so many students to educate them, give them the feedback, and turn them into employable candidates so it doesn't become a time suck for them and something that they're not going to be interested to use. Yes. Uh, thank you very much, Ron, for the question. Yes, that is a very good question. Um, so one of the things that it's something that we faced in the early days because we wanted the employers to be the ones developing these, uh, these uh, programs, but also being the ones training the young people to become ready. However, we realized that we can actually take a, a, a lot of that work uh, but also because what right now the employees that we're currently working with is we create these programs in partnership with them, so which decreases the time for them to be able to do it. Uh, but also at the same time, we've been looking at different technologies that are emerging right now that can help us actually, by understanding one employer, we're able to replicate for a lot of different employers. Because when it comes to feedback on a specific skill or a specific task, um, when you, what you realize is that in different industries, it becomes quite similar. So what we're doing is leveraging uh, technology such as AI to be able to see 
what are the patterns for one employer and what is the feedback that they're providing, which is the training, and how can we rep replicate it for other different employers and make, just make very small tweaks to make it more relevant for and more uh, ab adapted to the specific uh, person who's using the platform. Thank you. Well done, uh, Yusuf. That was excellent. Uh, quick question for you. You showed us uh, multiple competitors who are already in this space and, and working. So why should we invest in you? And what makes your company uniquely suited to solve Rwanda's problems and by extension Africa's? Thank you very much. That's a very good question. So most of the competitors that I mentioned there, um, all of them are based outside of Africa. So that is number one. So they haven't really looked at the African markets. And as I mentioned in our competitive advantage is that we have a strong focus with uh, the curriculum integration. Because if you look at the problems that the African continent is facing, they're quite different from the, the US and other different markets, right? So in the US, you would have a problem where employers are just looking for the solution and they wanna pay for it quickly. But when we, when we try to do it here in Africa, we realize that uh, businesses are also struggling and sometimes they might not have a lot of money for them to be able to spend on this but the universities is where the impact is actually uh, really big because the career development for universities for the average university in Africa is dysfunctional they don't have the, the information about what employees are looking for but then you keep seeing a lot of people just go to universities but then there's nothing that happens after that when you graduate and get your paper that's it the university doesn't really support you to have a, to land your first job so our solution is really targeting that problem. So specifically right now, we're kind of in talks with the University of Rwanda to see how we can directly integrate by learning what exactly the students are learning in class and how can we uh, really link the different modules that we're providing to the specific modules that they're learning in class so we can be able to guarantee a much more high uh, graduation after, the, uh, after school. And um, we, have, we have seen that that is actually a model that is, really, that is working really well and uh, universities are willing to pay for it and we have a lot of partners who are really willing to jump on this. Thank you very much, Yusuf. Um, uh, to close this speech, yes. uh, can you give us a, a sense of, uh, in terms of sustainability, how you see it long term, financial sustainability of your solution? Thank you. Yes. In a very few words. Thank you very much. So the sustainability, what we validated in terms of revenue models so far is that employers are willing to pay for um, having a, the right talent and we've been able to uh, basically charge companies for that kind of service. And uh, that has been a very sustainable model because it has been sustaining our company for the last four years. Um, however, what we're looking into, the products that we're developing right now are the yearly subscription for universities, but as well as a very small fee for graduates and uh, students who are willing to, to pay for this. Thank you, Yusuf. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Yusuf. Thank you for being the icebreaker of today. Such an amazing solution. As we said, brilliant ideas are going to be pitched. The judges are deciding. But you are also learning. Up next is a free farmer's market. Yes. Before you start pitching, allow the video to play to give you the introduction and then you can go. Let me have the team please play the video of Afri Farmers Market. My name is Norman Mugisha and I'm the CEO and founder of Afri Farmers Market. At Afri Farmers Market, we, have, we use technology to help farmers access stable market for their produce and also help them using technology to practice sustainable agriculture. What we hope to change and achieve is to help uh, digitize farmers, help them access stable market and increase their household income and also transforming agriculture in Rwanda so that we can ensure food security and poverty alleviation. I'm ready to present my idea in front of the judges and I'm super excited about it. Hello. Hello everyone. Okay, I, I can start maybe. 
Um, my name is Norman uh, Mujisha. I'm the founder and CEO of Afri Farmers Market. At Afri Farmers Market, we're leveraging technology to empower rural farmers on how they can access market easily for their produce and also produce food that is market oriented. Um, you, you might maybe wonder why we, we are into, uh, we, we, we're into, uh, um, into agriculture. Um, if you look at the population here in Rwanda, 70% of the population here in Rwanda depend on agriculture. It's the backbone of, of, of our economy. Unfortunately, uh, we, farmers haven't benefited a lot. Uh, um, and if you can see, like, if you find like, m people who are mostly uh, poor are those rural farmers, yet the majority depend on agriculture. So uh, I want to take you through a journey of, um, of one of our farmers. And uh, so you have going to see one of our farmers, Jackie. She has, she's having a small uh, farm. She's producing fruits and vegetables because that's her main source of income. And after harvesting, she needs to sell the produce. Unfortunately, in her community, in Road Deep, in, in the eastern province, there is no one to buy her produce. So what is she going to do? To harvest, wait for one, the market that happens once in, 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 in her community, once in a week or twice in a week, then take her produce to the market. How is she going to take the produce? Cutting it on the head. Sometimes there are thousands of, of like, like her who are having, actually, when you move up country, you find... They're having the, the, the produce on the head, and they're having their kids at the back. And you can imagine the future of the kid at the back. Should we should remain like that? Something needs to be done. Now successfully she reaches on the market. When she reaches on the market, there are others also who have come, who have waited for that market to come once in a, in a, in a week. They are also there. They're waiting for the middlemen to come and buy their produce. If the middlemen, because they want to leverage and get more profits, they're going to give them unfair price. So what are they going to do? Are they going to carry the produce back home with it, which is fresh produce, which are very perishable? Or she's going to, they're going to be forced to sell it at any price. Do you think them can they overcome poverty through that process? That is their source of income, really helping them to develop. And not only that, because of lack of market, 40% of the produce is lost during post-harvest. And this has caused continued circles of poverty among the rural farmers. And it has demotivated young youth who are here, they can verify that they have demotivated them to join the field. Um, so Afri Farmers shows up, and this is our product, where how now you and me who are in Kigali or in any place or at your home, you can access this fresh, fresh produce directly from the farm. You, it's, how does it work? You're just at home. You press the order. So we start with the farmer. The farmer will keep after harvesting. We, we, we bring it here in Kigali where we have our storage facilities. Then you order through our platform. We can bring it at home. You not moving any, any, any distance, which is, which, which is more, much more affordable. And the farmer remains at the, at the farm and gets more income and gets more and grows and it also impact our, our society. So after buying, you pay us. 15% remains with Afri Farmers Market. As, and 80% goes back to the farmers. In comparison, which is different from other cases, where farmers actually get 30%, imagine that unfairness. Uh, so after serving that one, we were like, oh, wow, the farmers have the market. Everything is fine. But we realized that actually the food they produce is not market-oriented. So how are we going to satisfy the needs of clients when the food produced is not, is not market-oriented, is not of good quality? Then we, initi we initiated our capacity building program. How can they get skills and knowledge on how to produce food that is market-oriented, that can compete on the market, not only here in Rwanda, but across the continent? Um, then we also realized they lack access to inputs. Then we started how we can provide them inputs and partnership with different in, in, uh, input suppliers so they can have, get affordable inputs to boost their production. And with that, being able to 50% increase in the farm production. So if you increase the production, they increase the income. And also it increase the household income. And also using different technologies. We're also forming, farming, uh, fa f forming communities of practices where these farmers can meet on the platform and share ideas and experience. Um, so, uh, so you might ask, why now? Why are free farmers at this moment? Why did we start? I do believe that 
uh, uh, technology will be powering forth industrial revolution for agriculture. We need smart agriculture that can respond to, to, the, to climate change. And also, we need food. We need to produce food that is more affordable and accessible for billions of people living all around the world. And why not? Why can't we put agri agriculture, Rwandan agriculture on the global, on the global stage? Um, part of our market is, uh, part of our market, if you look at the farmers we, we are working with, actually here, only here in Rwanda, they produce 75% of the food we consume. In, in East Africa, 75% of the population depend on agriculture. So you can see we have enough supply. If we work with these farmers, we have enough supply. And in East Africa, like people who are living in urban, 20% of people are living in urban and pre-urban areas who are willing to buy this produce without moving any step from their farms, from their, from their houses. And that is around 91 billion market size that we are entering in. Um, so what's our, uh, sorry, our growth, uh, growth and product mission? We want to increase the number of customers to 50,000 in the next two years, uh, specifically here in Rwanda, also in, including East Africa. Um, expand our delivery system so that we can deliver on time. I increase the number of, of farmers, 2,000, uh, 2,000, uh, 200,000, and also build the platform. We are now already organizing a platform that if this farmer who doesn't have access to a smartphone, how can they get information? How can you just be at farm, sorry, at your home, and you manage your farm, and you get information around, the opportunities around in agriculture so that they can develop? Um, so our business model is from farm to fork, and... Uh, the way we, our customers are segmented into two, the business to business, there's like hotels, restaurants, schools, and also B2C, which are customers directly to homes. And how do we make money? If you buy, you purchase from our platform, you buy directly from, then we get a 15% profit margin. So you can see from the farm after harvesting comes the strategy, we pack it, then we can deliver it on your time. And you can see some of the, our great partners, like Jessiri, which we are really grateful of, Dove, and other different. Uh, 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 com so what is our competitive, uh, com competitive uh, advantage? Our farmers, we, we, are from, like, we have high quality produce because we have a competitive advantage working with, directly with the farmers and low price compared. Actually, we, if you compete, we compare with our competitors, we have 20% less compared to uh, our competitors. Um, our goat, goat market strategy, we are looking at how we can use different uh, social media networks to reach out different new customers. Recently, we launched a partnership with Ihuzo and the ICT Chamber, sponsored by MasterCard Foundation, on how we can digitize farmers, how we can help farmers uh, uh, access the stable market. Um, then, our, some of the key success stories that we really are grateful at the, with the team that for the, first, for the past one and a half years that we've been working, we've been able to provide market for 5,000 farmers with capacity building to improve their production. And 27% of them actually are the first time farmers, where the young people, you can see the age from 18 to 27. Imagine the employment opportunities that are being generated in those communities. And also 70% of them are women. And so our finances, well, we had like a projection for the last, uh, for the first half and a year we started and the last, this year and also for the next. But our projection show that uh, the main now source of income comes for revenue comes from market vendors, homes, restaurants and, uh, and, and hotels, and also uh, homes, uh, schools, sorry. So our investment, we need uh, 100 and 150,000 in, in funding to expand our production. But if we win 50,000 USD that today we are competing for, we'll be able to uh, invest it in appropriate technology for the farmers and for us to improve our product, to in, expand our, our activities, capacity building for the farmers, uh, logistics and staff, and also marketing. Uh, we, we have a strong team, great, great advisors that have experience in this area, and also a team that works every day, have di diverse experience in agriculture, IT, and business management to ensure that we achieve, we achieve this dream. 
So me personally, we've got being raised and born in similar conditions so that the farmers were supporting where they are. And I got an opportunity to go to study uh, agriculture in the US and also go back to China. I realized that there was, uh, was an obligation for me to come back and support the rural farmers and transform my community. So today I call you to join us so that we can uh, help farmers access the stable market, overcome poverty, and make our uh, communities prosperous. Thank you so much. Thank you, Norman, for playing this uh, key role uh, of adding value to our farmers and uh, by making the products available to all of us. Thank you so much. Uh, I would like to hand over to Eric. Hi, Mogisha. Uh, thank you so much for an amazing presentation. I think your solution is relevant for Rwanda, but beyond to the whole of Africa. Thank you so much. Thank you. So, uh, in listening to you, I got excited because you seem like you have many businesses in your business. You have a logistics business, you have a training business, you have an input business, you have a technology business. Which one of those businesses do you like the most and where would you like to focus? Yeah, thank you so much for the great question. Um, yeah, there are many ideas all together, but all that is the package that is helping us to stand out different from other competitors and ensure we achieve our dream. So first of all, like I said, when we started with providing, we were like, farmers can't keep walking this and losing their produce. You know, like, let's provide a platform that can help them. Then we realized that give, putting a platform one sort of, so most of them, they don't even have smartphones, they don't have enough, even the small phones, they don't have where to charge them. Imagine you are here in Kigali, and you want some watermelon to be harvested, uh, maybe to be delivered from the eastern province, and you just need to call a farmer to come to you. It's really, really challenge, challenging, and that's why I say, okay, let's do part of, 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 of also include the part of, of, um, of, of, of logistics. How can it come? And that's why we put our, our, um, our facility for, for collection so that we can pack it easily. Because also for our clients, we work with hotels and restaurants. Most of them actually work, some of my team is here, we start even working at 4.30 or in most cases so that we can deliver that fresh produce because they need it early on in the morning. So when we're doing a market study, also a survey asking the clients well, how would they want it. They would really want it on their doorsteps. Unfortunately, maybe in the near future, we're looking at how we can pattern. Like right now, we are patterning with even different uh, um, uh, uh, like the, in the Rwamagan district, there is one group, a cooperative that we started with. Now they are giving them irrigation system and different ways of partnering with others, so like part of input and everything. But right now, as we are starting, we are tackling and so that when we are bringing a partner, we understand how he or she could uh, uh, cooperate with us. So what I'm hearing is that you want to use partners to build an ecosystem and you don't yeah. want to do everything yourself. No, we, for us, we'll continue with the e-commerce platform for the AI, uh, yes, yes. But if we get other partners to support us, like in inputs and everything, yes, that would be great. Well done. Thank you. You're welcome. There is. Thank you very much, Mugisha. Very critical problem that you're solving. And just to um, piggyback on the question that he just asked, could you please elaborate on your revenue model for all these different segments of the business. I know you mentioned the 15% commission on the sales, mm -hmm. but you seem to have other businesses around what you're doing. And I just want to know if there's any other revenue model that you have around that. And also share uh, a little bit more on your uh, scaling strategy. How do you plan to go beyond uh, Rwanda? Okay. Thank you so much. For the main part of the part of the revenue comes from mainly, 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 which our source of, of revenue, the income that comes, is the 15% we charge on each commission. They say you buy the one kilogram of, uh, of, of Irish potato, that's maybe 300 Rwandan francs, then our, pro, our we take 15%. So other business like others, we're doing as, as like a service for the farmers, uh, for logistics, we don't we, we, we don't charge you know, we don't charge farmers, and also for the um, maybe part of the farm inputs, but there are not many. Maybe for the young people, but when we give inputs, we don't also charge them. Like we give them, but we we sign a contract with them that after you harvest, it's us to buy the, the input. Then they can pay back the input we gave them on credit in the harvest, not in cash. So at the moment, we don't have any apart from the 
uh, for, for the sales. We don't have any other, maybe in the near future you can think about it, but right now it's specifically from the, com uh, the commission we charge on the sales. Uh, for the part of scaling, that's a great question. Thank you so much. First of all, in the next year, we want first in Rwanda, operating like other secondary cities like Musanzi, uh, Huye, and other cities. Then we have already, actually right now we have, they, they completed recently, we had a group of six students from, uh, from China, Tsinghua University, where I was uh, my former uh, school, uh, my former university. They've been helping us designing a model, how can we replicate this in different countries? And right now we have Tanzania, we have Uganda, those are and and, uh, and Burundi. Those so far, they, pay, they, they, they gave us how we, if we want to go, to go next. So we are going to use the same approach, but regardless of also respecting other different norms, looking at the people we can partner with in that country, looking at the approach you can use, but the same vision of helping farmers overcome poverty. Thank you very much, Nidisha, for your healing pitch. Now you can relax and enjoy other pitches. Thank you so much. I hope that you guys are learning. This is gonna be a very, very hard decision to make. Coming up, we have Afbiduino. Please go on stage and let's see the video presenting your company. I'm Chuzo Diana. I'm the CEO of Afbiduino Limited. By now we have two products. Uh, a cable, it's an MP3 player, and a combi, it's a, a smart light bulb. We are trying to solve the problem of people living in rural areas who don't have access to smart home devices by providing them smart home devices shaped in our Rwandan cultural tools. I'm super excited to present my idea in front of judges. Murahone Umuto muri twebwe yagumagaza mbaza nk'imfura kirani igikiba gikoresha iki gikora gite ntangira kwibaza ese iki kibazo cyaba ari we wenyine ugifite cyangwa ari nabandi bangana bafite icyo kibazo nakoze ubushakashatsi sangwa abana bakiri batoya urubyiruko ntimbazi ibikoresho byakoze bikoreshwa nabo dukomokaho Sanga, uyu munsi biyumva mu iterambere kurenza uko biyumva mu bikoresho cyangwa mu mateka yashize ni muri urwo rwego nakoze ubundi bushakashatsi nsanga ibikoresho ndanga amateka by'umuco wacu birimo birakoreshwa mu bundi buryo bw'imitako izihenze gutyo Rwanda nyamwinshi ni babyisangemo ibikoresho byacu byasimbuwe nibituruka mu mahanga biza ku bwinshi kandi bikaza bigura makeye bityo abantu bakabyitabira ku rwego runini ni muri urwo rwego natekereje ese ni gute twabunga bunga ibikoresho ndanga amateka by'umuco wacu nkuko dukorerwa izizame dire mu Rwanda bityo twifashije itera ikora na buhanga tukaba twakora smart home devices bityo ukiguza akajyana igikoresho cyikora na buhanga kandi agatwara n'igikoresho ndanga amateka cy'umuco wacu ni muri urwo rwego nifashije ama 3d printers ma 
umumaro mushya ibikoresho ndanga amateka by'umuco w'abanyarwanda kugira ngo nibura n'imyaka izagendiza nkibizacike ahubwo bizakomeze bikoreshwa ariko none ho bijyana n'igiye tuzaturimo uburyo rero nkora ibyo bikoresho nda designing nga na producing cases nifashishije shapes ibikoresho bya gakondo nka assembling mp3 motherboards na smart light bulbs natangiranye four prototypes zari akebo kari muri ino shape nangirana gacuma nangirana igitekerezo kingoma nakoramo mp3 player nangirana n'igitekerezo cyo gukora agaseke muri smart light bulb kubwo ubushobozi kugeza ubu ngubu nakoze akebo mp3 player nkora na smart light bulbs yitwa ikombe ikombe rero iritara gifite amakara seta atandukanye agera kuri miliyoni 16 icyatsi ubururu abandi mabara atandukanye ishora gukora offline ukoresheje e-link na application ishora no gukora online ukoresheje Google Assistant na Alexa ikindi kandi iri automated ushora kuryatsa ukarizimya ubaye uhari cyangwa udahari ushora guhindura ibara ushora kongera urumuri ushora kurugabanya ushora kuvuga ati saa 10 n'ibyi muze kwaka aya mabara saa 9 mwaka ya mu gitondo muze kuzima iki gihe ubaye uhari cyangwa udahari Akevo murakuzo Akevo ni MP3 player nturu byiruko dukunda imiziki ariko ntibivuze ngo twibagirwe bya bikoresho byacu ni muri urwo rwego nakoresheje shape ya Akevo nkora radio ikoresha bluetooth version 4.2 ni version nziza ikoresha FM ushaka kumva o radio ikoresha na bluetooth murakoze ibi bikoresho byanjye rero kugeza uno munsi mbigurisha akebo iyino radio nyigurisha amadorari 15 eh iritara mureba ndigurisha amadorari 50 naje kubona ko young generation batari kugira knowledge kubikoresho ndanga amateka by'umuco w'abanyarwanda bityo nsanga benshi baba mu miji muri diaspora ni muri urwo rwego nazanye iki gisubizo ariko nibikura uko nabo mu cyaro hari abadafiteho ubumenyi kujyanye n'ibyo kugeza ubu ngubu abakiriya benshi mfite na ba diaspora na ba turiste ningo zikize ndetse n'amahoteli nitubare ariko mu mwaka utaha ndifuza nanone na gufokasinga kuri low income households abatuye mu cyaro nabatifashije nabo bakabasha kugura ibikoresho byanjye kugeza ubu ngubu aba competitor duhanganye ku isoko harimo Philips na Refix bakora ibikoresha kenshi usanga bisabira wifi kugira ngo bikore bityo ugasanga ingo nyinshi zo mu Rwanda dufite ni bayikoresha bityo ni wabashe kugira access kuri ibi bikoresho ni baratangira gucuruza mu Rwanda ikindi kandi ibikoresho byabo biza bihenze cyane ni bityo nifashishije ibi bijya kugura Mache cyane kuyimitako bityo kajyana two in one aho kugira ngo ugure umutako uzareba nta kandi gaciro ugufite Kugeza ubu ngubu ncuruzira ibikoresho byanje kuri singa singa ni website yacu mu gakenye kuri office yacu ndi gukorera muri mu ntara ya majyaruguru no kuri Karisha Center ebyiri imwiri ikigali indiri rurindo ariko guhera mu ntangiro z'umwaka utaha ndetse na hazaza ndifuza ku joininga amasoko muza mahanga ndetse nayo mu Rwanda online markets ngakutangira gukorana na culture centers zitandukanye nzaba nyikoresha iyo website ikindi kandi nza ndifuza gufungura ama shops ahantu hatandukanye mu gihugu kugira ngo abakiriya banje babashe kubona ibikoresho byanje mu buryo bworoshye 
kugira ngo mbashe gukora ibyo byose nongera umusaruro ndifuza kugura industrial 3D printers izamfasha mu kongera umusaruro w'ibikoresho nkoresha kandi ngatangira no gukora izindi product kugeza ubu ngubu isoko ryanje riraruta cyane ubushobozi mfite kuko mu kwezi ari je mbona abakiriya benshi cyane bigahura nuko ntafite ubwo ubushobozi bwo kubahaza ndifuza gutangira kwikorera MP3 motherboards zijyanye n'igihe kuko bizangabanyiriza ibi expenses nataga kubyo naguraga hanze ikindi cyagatatu ndifuza gutangira gukora chip right smart light bulbs kuburyo nabo mu cyaro ari byo byaso computer ahanini nari guhaza nibura nabo batangire babigure kuko nabonye ko kagenshi babishaka ndifuza kandi gukora agaseke ni smart light bulbs nsa izabije ku isoko ndifuza kandi gukora connected mp3 players zakoresha google assistant na alexa kugeza ubu ngubu ntaga ibi byose nabikora ngenyine ni ceo mfite chief technical officer aba engineers bane na accountant nkagira nabanyakabyizi 10 kuri 20 baburi munsi bitewe na kazi mfite mba mfite kugeza muri no mwaka kugeza muri uko kwezi turimo na bucuruje amaradio akebo 3885 ngurisha na smart light bulbs zigera kuri 2400 mu mwaka utaha ndifuza nibura kuzabangurisha smart light bulbs igihumbi nka nifuza gukora radio smart eh, connected mp3 players zizaba ziku, nibura magana ne mu mwaka bizaba ari ikintu kiza kugira ngo mbigereho nifuza kugura industrial 3d printers zizanwara amadorari ibihumbi 20 nkanifuza gukore kugura ibikoresho bizakenera ibihumbi 15 by'amadorari bizamfasha gukora motherboard expenses zindi zizanwara ibihumbi birindwe no kugora kugura amafilaments bizanwara ibihumbi 8 ku mukobwa nago byari byoroshye mu ikora na buhanga nahuye na byinshi binci nege ariko ibitarashobokaga ubu birimo birashoboka murakoze cyane urakoze cyane murakoze urakoze cyane eh passion ukora ni ibyo ukora eh ni ngufu ubishyiramo biragaragara eh ukaba wara izicyo gitekerezo cyo guhuza umuco wacu guhuza nibintu byanye nitera mbere akaba ari igitekerezo kiza cyane ukaba wara hisemo kubivuga mu kinyarwanda kugira ngo bihure ni ibyo ukora Eh twongere tuguha mashi. Dear judges, um, Diane can also answer in English. So feel free to address your questions. So uh, Diane, congratulations. Thank you. Unfortunately, in Sinzi Kumvunga Kinyaronda, so I will ask in English. Yeah, it's okay. Uh, can we order your products for corporate gifts? Yeah, sure. Yeah, sure. That was my question. Akazi Thank you. Thank you so much. Well done. Um, this is absolutely you've clearly articulated the problem and, and a solution. My question to you is You've told us you want to reach poor households in rural areas. What are your barriers to drive cost down? Nowadays, I'm buying um, products from abroad and I have simple 3D printers machines. It requires men like too much money for me to manufacture at least one smart light bulb. That's why I'm selling them at higher prices. But if I inquire industrial 3D printers, I will be able to manufacture too many and it will not take me much money to manufacture one so that everyone will be able to afford my products. Um, 
Great job, Diane. Um, Thank you. Really inspired by what you're doing. Uh, I would like for you to elaborate on who your customers are and also please enlighten us on your innovation process. How do you come up with such brilliant products? First of all, I love our culture. I'm a Rwandan. Uh, I've been raised in a family who respected and loved our culture. So by now, my products, I have a limited uh, option because of money, but if I may be sponsored, I may be able to manufacture main products. This one is a right bulb. I'm about, it's not yet finished, but it's, uh, I've been inspired by Ichi Akabindi. You know Akabindi? It's a smart right bulb. The only thing it will take you to use it is just touch it to switch it on and off. It can work online and offline. I'm just mixing technology and uh, the shapes of our Rwandan cultural tools so that they can't be extinct. I've seen that in very few years to come, our cultural tools will be extinct. That will be too shameful. We are Rwandans. Yes, we don't, we don't have to be called Rwandans because we are Rwandans. We have things which, which present us as Rwandans, like this, made in Rwanda. Thank you. Yes. Are your questions answered? Oh, sorry for that. Abakiriya wange by now, diaspora, our tourist, ama hotel in Utubari, ningo zifashish, with a no kibichiro with Jehanit, Nim Basha Gutanja Gukora Kuginsh, Abakiriya wange, Dimonda Focusing, a Congo, ziti fashish a chan, Kujirango Nabonivazachi can any terambere, Yaman Vundi Gukora no Munara, Nago Dushaka Kitanambere is the Chigai, Nirijana Munara, Tukasanit Kirun, the Chigari Jubuzi. Thank you very much. Amashime Chane Kuri Dian. Bamge Muritke Tukasha Kagano Kumva. Iyo bafu kunivuga. Turaza kuyumva nyuma. Thank you very much. Up next, second life storage. We can now, now have the video that introduces the pitch. My name is Leandre Berwa and my company's name is uh, Second Life Storage. We are building battery storage systems for our telecom towers. We are hoping to solve the battery waste problem and to provide better backup solutions to our uh, electricity users. I'm very ready to present my idea in front of the judges. Good afternoon everyone. I'm Leandre and I'm co-founder at Second Life Storage. The whole world is turning to renewable energy and electric mobility as part of essential solutions to climate change, Africa and Rwanda included. And these technologies have some key in common. They rely on batteries. That's amazing, but there's one problem. Batteries have a very limited lifetime. They can last for five to 10 years, depending on the usage and application. So now the problem is, what shall we do with all these batteries at retirement? Shall we dump them in landfills, making them hazardous to people and to the planet we are trying to save in the first place? Or can we actually make something useful out of them, especially that they retain about 70% of the initial storage capacity at retirement? We have 100 tons of them already retired in Rwanda alone. And for context, if we purpose all these battery waste, they can power about 100 health centers for a week on a single charge. On the consumer electricity side, 
We've seen a substantial improvement on the national grid, but we still also observe outages. This leaves our industrial and commercial consumers resorting to diesel generators for power backup. These generators are expensive to run and expensive to acquire as well, and they are polluting. For instance, we've observed 170 hours of outages in Kigali alone, and it's so much worse in some other parts of the country and of the region. And this is where SLS comes in. We provide energy storage as a service using repurposed battery cells. We are leveraging the remaining value of batteries at retirement, and we are building a real-time and remote monitoring system for visibility and control. We are innovating on an advanced battery management system for safety and optimal usage. This is how it works. We get battery cell from the waste supplier at a cost fee, or at a base fee of $50 per kilowatt hour, and we provide them as a service to telecom towers on a base fee of $20 per kilowatt per month. This means that you're not selling the battery packs, but rather uh, charging the, uh, for availab our power availability on the sites. You can think of it as leasing. Again, for context, for a typical telecom tower, like the ones used by MTN or Airtel, it costs us uh, about $250 to build a battery pack, and we charge them $300 per month. So it takes us about nine months for paying back the cost of building a battery, and we expect a lifetime of three to five years. There are many market segments that are fit for our solution, including telecom towers, commercial buildings, and industries. We can also provide them to residences and mini grids through partners. However, the telecom market is a perfect segment for our solution because they rely uh, heavily on interrupted power supply, they get penalties for any network outages, and also they show substantial growth that's very important for us to tap into. Our budget market, which is the London market, counts more than 1,000 towers, and we expect a 30% market share in five years. The electricity uh, power backup component in this market is valued at 13 million USD. The East African market is valued at close to 300,000, 300 uh, million USD, and the African market is valued at 3.8 billion USD. Everyone in our supply chain benefits from our solution. For the US supplier, we provide them a new revenue stream by avoiding them to uh, pay to send out the uh, battery waste for recycling for raw materials, and we provide them uh, a new revenue instead. And for the telecom tower operators, which are currently paying more than 6,000 uh, USD for buying and operating a digital generator every year, they'll be paying less than 4,000 USD with our batteries. That's a 43% cost saving every year. In addition, our batteries are more reliable. They are seamless to kick in. They can take on as soon as there's power outage and they are emission free. The real-time and remote monitoring system we are building with it gives visibility and control to telecom tower operators of what's happening on the site. They are modular, and you can tailor them to any uh, customer needs depending on their demand, and you can uh, expand it as their demand changes, grow or reduces. We are competing with diesel generators and other battery types, but our advantage over them is our service model which helps the customers to avoid upfront costs of acquiring a power backup solution for their sites and reduces their operating cost as well. And our embedded real-time monitoring system, again, uh, gives visibility and control. And comparing to other types of batteries, our lithium ion batteries have uh, more cycle life, they have faster charging times, they are more efficient, and they are maintenance-free. We are piloting our first product in the first quarter of next year and we are launching in the third quarter of next year. We expect to uh, be servicing 10 towers by the end of next year as well. We reduce 65% of direct CO2 emission on every telecom tower we service. And for context, uh, after five years, we'll be uh, able to save CO2 emission equivalent to more than 100,000 trees planted every single year. We are dreaming to become the ultimate energy solution in the region and beyond, and to be the missing link for the sustainable adoption of renewable energy and electric mobility. Here's the team driving this dream. We share a passion for clean energy, and we have a collective of more than seven years of experience in the energy field. 
working on battery research, battery testing, and in a, uh, data science in the energy field. We also have master's degrees in electrical and computer engineering from Carnegie Mellon University. We have a stellar team of advisors working with us on power systems, networks, enterprise breeding, marketing and branding, and business and development and strategy. We expect a, a profit of more than 1 million USD in year five, and our key drivers for this profit are net yearly prices, uh, battery purchasing costs, and the market share. We are looking for a 12 month funding for reaching product maturity and scaling our production. We'll be spending this on equipment, team expansion, and operation. And for 53,000 we are getting today, we spend it on our basic equipment and operations of our uh, product. I'm not a magician, but I would like to give you a trip in the future. A future where everyone has clean, reliable, and affordable access to electricity. And a future where no asset goes to waste prematurely. And if I could ask you, what do you think is standing between us and that future? It is the cost of breeding everything we need to breed, and it's also the decision we're making right now on how we approach to getting to that future. Are we really planning on importing everything and throwing them away after only using a portion of their capacity? Or can we actually make everything here and be innovative on how we think of ownership and uh, service models to enable circularity and efficient waste management? At Second Life Storage, we believe in this future, this second option. We are building the technology and the enterprise to enable it. And we're inviting you all to join us in making it a reality. Thank you very much, and be sure to be in touch if you have any questions and interest in our product. Thank you very much, <clears throat> Leon. Um, it is always a pleasure to see young people tackling these big global problems including um, environment and uh, providing renewable energy and so on. So well done. It's our pleasure as well. Thank you. Uh, Ron, please. Thank you. Hi. Uh, thank you. Thank you for that amazing, compelling presentation. It's very clear what this could do for the country and for the continent and maybe even the world. Um, what I'd be really interested in knowing is considering the fact that the product is not yet in market, I'd love to know, you know what is already validated on your end and what do you have left to validate in terms of actually creating the solution? And also what do you foresee is the biggest challenge you're gonna have in terms of getting in, into the market? Yeah, thank you very much. That's a very interesting question. Uh, my team and I have spent uh, more than two years now in research, working on this product. I've interned with uh, the biggest, one of the biggest tech companies in Japan, working on understanding like battery degradation models, like understanding battery operations and uh, battery aging patterns. And I could realize that by really having a deep understanding in this, you can safely and optimally leverage the remaining capacity of, of the batteries. And my team member also uh, done research on battery testing, like understanding like what's really the remaining capacity of the battery. Like what's the challenges, what's the technical challenges in uh, having them work together, uh, especially that you're getting battery waste from different applications, one coming from a laptop, another coming from an electric motorcycle or a solar uh, power. Like what should you be looking out to make sure these batteries can actually safely and optimally work together. So we spent time in research in school and also in touch projects and my uh, team member also spent uh, that battery testing part in industry with our in, with any waste co collect, collecting partner and we really understand like what's the technical challenge ahead of us and we are innovating on the battery management system as I said that make sure like every battery cell can be staying like in optimal operating conditions without damage to the battery itself or to the, to the site. And what to expect to be a challenge, as I said, like the technical challenge was the biggest challenge like doing this. And we think like we have a stub on it already, which will be validating with our first pilot next year. And the second thing will be uh, having people actually uh, have confidence in the solution. That's why you're starting with piloting before selling the first product. And we're expecting to pilot for one quarter, like three months. We'll be releasing case study 
like results on what went with, with, the, with, the, with, the, with the pilot, like validating the cost uh, reduction we promising to, to, our, to our customers. And we'll be having webinars of our public uh, events to actually like, give people confidence in what we are doing. This is a uh, success story testimonials from our piloting uh, partners. And we hope this can also give confidence that this is actually something that works and they can actually take on and benefit from the cost reduction you're promising. Thank you. Thank you very much, Landre. I really enjoyed your presentation. You made physics uh, a lot more exciting than I remember. Uh, my question is, before you launch your product, have you created any IP? And um, like to Claire's previous um, remarks, what have you done to protect it, if any? Oh, yeah. So uh, we have a prototype now. The prototype is a single module of the uh, visual, like the battery pack I showed in the slide, which is like made by, uh, when you think of batteries, they're made of modules, like one operating unit of a battery. And for a telecom tower, you need eight of those modules, a typical telecom tower operator. So we build one of those modules and we equipped it with a uh, battery management system, as you said. And that's been our progress on actually doing something uh, physical and understanding like how does this work? And if you actually understand this for a single module, it's being replicating it for eight more of those and putting them together and make sure they can work uh, properly for the sites you are providing them to. Is it protected if you've created intellectual property? No, we haven't yet, but we'll be looking also on patterns, especially that the, 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 the case of uh, algorithms for actually sorting like the, the optimal configuration for battery cells. Like for instance, you have like a pack of 5,000 cells, like we build an algorithm to identify like what's the optimal configuration, like what's the best way I could take the battery cells in this and put them together to size them for uh, application requirements. And uh, like doing that like very uh, efficiently with an algorithm is something we are looking into or uh, fighting for a pattern later on Don't to be able to protect our cells. I, I had the same question because you have to find a way to patent this. Yeah, thank you so much. It also be an advantage to our competitor when we do that. So we are looking into that seriously. Exactly, exactly. All right, thank you very much. Thank you too. Thank you, Second Life Storage. Coming up, we have Karisimbi Technology Solutions, and they're the last to pitch. Then we can go ahead and continue with the program. Welcome. My name is Angelo Igitego. I am the founder of Karisimbi Technology Solutions, a company based in Rwanda, and we provide Evolero Tech a solution that helps hospitals to operate paperlessly. We hope to change and revolutionize the healthcare space in Rwanda. We want that sector to be digital. Another advantage added value we, we are bringing on the market is to interconnect hospitals so that a patient's data is accessed by different doctors and different hospitals. We are ready to present our idea to the judges. We are excited. No, good afternoon. Uh, my name is Angelo Igitego, I'm 31. And uh, today I'll be talking about money, of course, but most importantly, I'll be talking about people, babies, sick people, patients. I can see, I can tell, we have many parents in the room. I'm not sure if any of you have, has ever experienced um, the agonizing journey of losing a child. A few years ago, I was blessed to have uh, a baby, it was a girl. Unfortunately, she was born with respiratory complications, so she had to be hospitalized. Three days later, she passed away, she died. 
And whenever I think about that night of her death, one image keeps coming into my mind. There were two nurses, and one of the nurses was constantly flipping through a stack of papers. And she didn't have enough time to come and take care of the other babies or even my own baby. And I felt unhappy, and I went more than one time asking her to come and help me because my baby was having seizures and her nasal tubes were coming out. Every time I asked for help, she pointed at the stack of papers saying, hey, if I don't sort this out and fill them correctly, all of those babies, 45 of them, will not receive appropriate care. Our profession relies heavily on information. Please understand. I love your baby just like any other baby. That's why I'm a nurse. But I have to do this correctly. I felt so powerless and helpless as I watched my baby suffer. And tears were rolling down my face as I had to go and replace and put back her nasal tubes. It was an agonizing moment. And I kept asking myself, why don't we have a software that helps doctors and nurses you know, to process all this information electronically so that the little amount of time they have with so many patients can be dedicated to be with the patients instead of spending it on papers If little tech is just that. It's a digital system that helps hospitals to operate paperlessly, processing information very fast. It is user-friendly. Doctors love it. It is affordable, and it works with or without internet. It also produces automated reports. Our value proposition is that we save medical practices, $2 per every visit. That translates to $32 million saved in reduced costs. There are about 2,000 health facilities in our beautiful country of Rwanda, and they process, on average, 16 million patient visits every year. Our main target market for the moment is the 158 private clinics, and the product we are giving to them really is taking something like you are seeing on the screen, this stack of papers, and replacing it with something like this. This technology that I piloted and created helps doctors retrieve a patient file within just a few seconds. The maximum is five. That's the promise we give to the hospitals we work with. And when a doctor has retrieved a patient file, while they are treating and entering this information, they can see on the left panel or on the left side the whole medical history of this patient. Our business model is broken into two. We charge a setup fee, which can also be paid in installments, and we also ask from our clients a minimal amount of money every month that can help us be sustainable as a business. We have competitors in the market, but really, their solutions, they just don't work. I agree that they have presence, they have been here before me, but the problem is that their solutions are just not effective. They still rely on paper alongside their digital solutions. They are not effective. They take very long to deploy, weeks, even months. And they just do not feed the local healthcare system. Our solution is much better. It takes a very little amount of deployment, just one day. 
And it's very high performance, like I mentioned. It's a few seconds. That's the promise we give. It is also affordable. We work closely with our partners to make sure that money does not become a burden for them. It is also very user-friendly. Doctors really, really love it because we developed it and I developed it alongside a medical professional who has been in the business for 20 years. It's also offline. It doesn't necessarily need internet. And when internet comes back, the whole data can be synchronized to the cloud. And another advantage, it produces automated reports, which usually used to take days, weeks, many people working on them, but now it's a click of a button. We have been working so far with uh, 22 health facilities, and we have managed to generate a revenue of 26 million Rwandan francs. More than 100 doctors and nurses have been already trained uh, to use our system, and they are currently using it. And more than 70,000 patients have already been treated through it. That's the size, that's an equivalent of six sectors in Rwanda, if I'm not mistaken. And uh, we have a growing database of laboratory tests and diagnosis, and we are still going. We plan to work with, to reach 100, 150 facilities in the next two years, and we plan to create jobs because we'll be generating a, re a revenue of more than 300 million Rwandan francs in the next two years. Our distribution channel has been mainly door-to-door. Uh, -door. We go, you know, on every hospital. We tell them, hey, this is what we have. Why don't you try it? And they try it, and they love it. But in the future, we want to put it online because we are planning to grow and uh, go in other African markets. We want to put it online so that it's easily accessible. For the moment, we have been working on this product for the past uh, few years. We launched in, uh, in July 2020. That's when we solved the problem of access uh, to internet because the product before was based on internet only. And for the moment, we are working with uh, 20 paying hospitals. And our vision, our future, is a healthcare practice that does not use any paper at all. We also plan to build an app for the patients and put the data, their medical history, into their hands. And every time you go to a hospital, the doctors will already know that you are coming, what you have been suffering from in the past, and you will be able to see your prescriptions on your phone and pay them electronically. We plan definitely to expand our service, reach more health facilities and we also plan to go in other countries west africa north africa eastern africa and southern africa i didn't do this alone i worked closely with a, a healthcare professional his name is jean paul valinda i think he's in the house and uh yeah it has been uh, an amazing journey and why we ask today from you the judges the guests the general public, is to support us with ideas, feedback, and trust in us. For the judges, I ask that you help me raise 350,000 US dollars to reach more hospitals, to create more jobs, and to make this vision a reality. Thank you very much. Angelo. Thank you very much for your appealing pitch. Allow me to first express our empathy. Um, it must have been a devastating experience that you have went Thank through. You. Thank you. Before I hand over to the other judges, I would like to understand a little bit better um, in terms of uh, competition and available systems. You mentioned different technical solutions that you have tackled, 
that maybe the competition has underestimated. Um, can you also explain what is specific in the Rwandan context that uh, you touched on it, but it wasn't very clear? What is different? What are you offering that other systems are not offering and that is relevant for Rwanda? Thank you very much. It sometimes gets very hard to explain um, problems uh, in the healthcare sector in Rwanda because they are very technical, but I, do, I will do my best to explain them. So, like I mentioned, we have about uh, 2,000 health facilities. And the government of Rwanda has been investing a lot of money in making sure that uh, Rwandans can get uh, health care easily. There is a goal that uh, there is a specific amount of time that uh, the government is trying to make sure that if you are sick, you don't have to run miles and miles. So the current problem is that uh, we have my biggest competitors. There are two of them. And uh, they were the first movers on the market. They are working primarily with public hospitals. And these are hospitals that are affordable. And the situation is that they kind of have a monopoly. Basically, the public hospitals cannot take our solution. There was this case. I went to this public hospital. Actually, my daughter died. Went to talk to the uh, director general, presented the, my solution, and he said, we have to go through, you have to go through the ministry. So it, this is a call. Uh, to the government to please try us, allow us to work with public hospitals because there is a monopoly. Our solution helps hospitals to run without papers. Please, please allow us. Please. So what we created is uh, we have this passion because, you know, I, I lost a daughter and I've seen so many people, you know, suffering, going through the pain because an invoice, for example, takes six hours to update. And these six hours, imagine if you are pregnant and you have to run back and forth up the stairs. So what we do is we make things simple and very fit and easy to use for doctors. And that's how we create value. Thank you. Thank you, Angelo. Dr. Samit. Thank you, Angelo. You absolutely have uh, clearly stated the problem. And also thank you for sharing your personal story. And I'm really sorry about the loss of your child. Uh, that is very painful, but also very proud of you to take this difficult and painful and agonizing moment and turning it into a success story, which is very consistent with the story of Rwanda. Thank you very much. I really want to build on again on the existing platforms. As you know, health information systems have been around now for several decades, and there are many that are open source and free. Um, and I also know there are other local solutions in Rwanda. So I think it would really be good, in addition to just, you know, our system works, if you can give us a little bit more about why your system is better. Uh, but in addition to that, I would love to hear your comment regarding interconnectivity of various facilities, as well as uh, data integrity, privacy, um, and uh, data, data patient confidentiality. As you know, data is as valuable as oil these days. Yes. Thank you. Um, thank you. So we, like I mentioned, we have uh, two key players in the market, and uh, they are imported solutions. So. Um, even though they are open source, working with them, they are built on difficult uh, uh, technology stacks. For example, um, for us to deploy, let's say, an SMS reminder solution, it takes just 24 hours. Whereas using these other technologies, it takes more manpower and more time. Also the deployment, it's weeks and, and weeks. Whereas our solution, we install it within just one day. Speaking on data, privacy, there is a, a law that was recently released by the Ministry of uh, in ICT, and it gives guidelines on what to respect and uh, how to go about uh, data management. And we are working, it's been almost a month, if I'm not mistaken, when it came out. We are working very hard to make sure that we comply with the, uh, with the laws. For the moment, from a technical standpoint, we use um, uh, security uh, measures, for example, accessing our first servers are stored um, 
in a safe physical place. Not everyone can access them. Number two, even if you accessed it, for example, the server where the data is hosted because the data is hosted on premise of the hospital, it requires at least three passwords to get into the system. Every doctor and every nurse on, in the hospital has a username and a password that you, they use um, to access the data and modify the data. Thank you. So, Angelo, thank you very much. That thank you very good. much. Thank you. Wow. Wow, wow. And we come to the end of the pitching. Mm -hmm. Trust me, you don't want to be in their positions right now. Everyone is wondering, what did I miss? You all did amazing. I'm, I'm being honest with you. You all did amazing. I was, I was seated with a colleague, and she asked me, Arthur, where were we 15 years ago? What solutions did you come up with? Here we are. Yeah, we were competing how to eat Erindaz in 10 seconds. <laughs> But we could see the time and effort you put in and the passion as well. We're very excited to see what the judges have to say. We're all on our feet with you. Mm -hmm. So if any of you wins, please take me with you. I can intern. <laughs> <laughs> I think let's allow the judges to take this time for deliberation. Thank you. You've done an amazing job, judges. You've asked the right questions. And I think those questions were good for even the people pitching to see if they, if they didn't think about it, then they should start thinking about it. Please, take your time and just remember, the award will go to one winner for the first place, and it's in your hands. The remaining <laughs> colleagues that are here, students, how are you? Can you turn and tell your neighbor, Uraho, Yambi Mubitechelezo? I don't see turning over here. Can you turn? There are some people you didn't get time to connect when they entered, they just took their seats. Turn around and look at them and say, How are you? How are you doing? In fact, ask them, Did you enjoy the session? Because yes. remember, some of them might be your co-founders, mm -hmm. they might give you ideas. So make sure to network. Do not leave here without a name of a new person. Oh, yes. Now, I'm going to be surprising some of you because I saw you taking notes. I would love you to tell me, Mumagambo Mache, Nichiwize Uyumons. Mubikorwa Bjabaye Hano, hello, how are you? I'm fine. I have another student and let's hear what she has to say from today. So I can start by my names, I'm Kara Madina. Uh, so what I have learned today is to stay focused on what you want to do. Uh, like if you have an idea, you, you, you have to develop it. Sorry. Stay Thank focused, you, and if you have an idea, I remember a gentleman here raised his hand, very, very straightforward, when I asked anybody with an idea, you had an idea, sir. What did you learn today? Now that you have an idea, You've seen people that can make that idea come to life. What is your takeaway? Thank you. My, na uh, my name is Kimenye Arnold. So, so actually, I, I have an idea and a prototype of my project, but I didn't know there are incubators. So when I learned there is incubators, 
the first step is to go to see the MPA, to see someone who can help me to, to yeah, that's it. Amazing. You've got to know the connections. There is Jasiri, there was the FinTech, and they gave you different solutions. And as I'm up here in the stairs, I want to ask a couple of people, if you had one word to describe today, what would that be? Oh, well, the pictures were amazing. They, uh, they have amazing ideas. Um, it was really inspiring and great. So the word would be inspiring? Yes. Okay, a couple more. What would the one word be? It was educative. Educative. One more, sir. What would the word be? Uh, I wrote inspired as well. Mm -hmm. Got inspired. Nancy, I want to ask a very simple question. Sir, how are you? What's your name? I'm called Robert Mwes. Robert, imagine today is your day. You win 50,000 US dollars now. Without thinking so much, what would you do? I have to make sure that I impact, especially the people in my community, by coming up with a project that will support them. Aha. Uh -huh. <laughs> right on the top of the mind, he thought of a solution that interests the community. That is how you think of a new business. We got the side on that side saying what they took away in one word. For those of you who joined us a bit late, Honorable Minister of ICT and Innovation mentioned one thing, the future of Pitch Fest. The future of Hunger Pitch Fest is on. We need at least 10 of them for us to feel the impact with a show of hands, who is ready to join next year's Pitch Fest? Let me see how aggressive you are. Wherever you are with a show of hands, who is ready? With a show of hands. This is, if you feel inspired and you don't want to miss out next time, let me see your hands. Where are you? Amazing. Amazing. I love, I love the people putting two hands up. Love that enthusiasm. Amazing. But of course, let's ask the people who've been in the hot seat. How do you feel? Great. Great. I love that. Yeah. Urum fu meze gut. Ni shimi eh. Ari konhe jere jani zamu matiko. Yuri uvem. How do you feel? Excited for having all these people here about our solution, our project. Hopeful. Hopeful. <laughs> love that. Excited. Excited. So the main theme is excitement, not only from the contestants, but also from the crowd. And of course, I don't know about you guys, but I'm excited to also see how this comes about. As I mentioned earlier, it's going to be a tough decision to make, but that is why we have very able judges to take that responsibility. And of course, they'll be awarding everyone, but the first winner will be receiving... Arthur, can you remind us? Mm-hmm. I kept on mentioning it. <laughs> if some of you have calculators, then you can try. The first one is going to be going home with 50,000 US dollars. That's, 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 that's good money to start with. Most of the businesses are already somewhere, and that's a good investment. When you talked about excitement, I'm going to be honest with you. I am very, very excited with what we are going to have next with the Pitch Fest coming next year or other years. Because if this was the start, imagine what we are having next. The brilliant ideas that have been pitched, the amazing idea in the healthcare system, agriculture, tech sector, keeping our culture alive through the technology, Imagine dancing a zonto on a Kavindi style. Absolutely. Isn't that amazing? Amazing. Yes. Ladies and gentlemen, today is the day we are here to witness who walks away with the money, but again, 
We are here to learn, observe, and plan for our next move. Now that you've learned, what are you doing next? That's an assignment for you. When you go home, think about it. And of course, for all the schools that are here, remember when we did the shout out where you had to represent? Imagine one of you or one of the people you go to school with are sitting in that seat. How would you feel? How would you feel? How would you feel? Excited, it comes back again. I know that Arthur and I were looking at some students from El Deca and we're already really excited. So now imagine for some of you being able to do this from wherever you come from. The sky's the limit. Actually, there is no limit. You go big. All right, now as we wait, you know the judges are taking their time. We have a brilliant DJ in the house that is going to be giving us some good music. Use this music to digest. Use this music to think about yourself. Honorable Minister of ICT and Innovation said one thing that it starts with you. Then it goes to who surrounds you. And then it goes to the opportunities around you. If you took some notes, DJ Bisoso, give us some good music so that we can digest what we've just seen. Now, when we come back, we are going to be announcing the winners, the champions of Hunger Beach Fest. DJ Bisoso, take us there. Hunger Pitch Fest uh, is a competition uh, that is targeting startups where we're looking to identify uh, the different startups that we have across Rwanda, looking at the different ideas that they are building, but also offering them a platform where they can showcase the different uh, innovations that they are working on, offering them an opportunity to have um, you know, peer mentorship and mentorship with um, other different organizations. And at the same time, we're also looking to provide them with training and business development services. At the highlight of this competition is also uh, cash prizes that are targeted towards helping these businesses grow. Uh, what excites me about Rwanda's innovation culture is that it's more engaged within young people. Young people are taking the lead and everyone is trying to innovate and people are trying to catch up because I think COVID has taught us that we really need to be innovative. And you see mostly young people are trying to, everyone has an idea, everyone has an, a creative and innovative idea. So that's really amazing. I think the future is much going to be much brighter. What excites me about the Rwandan innovation culture is that it's fast growing. There's a lot of uh, challenges that needs to be addressed here in Rwanda. So which gives a lot of room for us young entrepreneurs to come up with ideas and innovations that can actually contribute to the society, but also uh, create sustainable businesses. So beyond um, identifying this talent, um, we're also looking to, you know, categorize them because startups have different uh, growth stages. Um, you have those startups that are still at pre-seed level, you have those that are at seed level, and those that have uh, matured enough, they already have a prototype in place, they already have um, put their products and services on the market. And so being able to look at the different um, segments of uh, startups that they're in, and then designing uh, support uh, that they need uh, to really grow to the next level. je gukurikira televiziyo rwanda muri aka kanya hano muri Kigali Arena hakomereje iki gikorwa cyahanga Pitch Fest reka dukomeze tubayikaze mu minota mike itarambiranye aho mukuru w'igihugu aza kuba ageze hano kugira ngo agire ubutumwa ndetse n'ibiganiro muri rusange agirana n'uru rubyiruko rutandukanye rwiganjemo abanyeshuri baza kaminuza zitandukanye za hano mu Rwanda amashuri yisumbuye za secondaire ndetse nabandi batandukanye ariko hari naba 
nabagera kuri batanu muri uru rubyiruko babashije kugera kuri finali nyuma yuko batangiye iri rushanwa ryo kwerekana imishinga ifitiye akamaro societe nyarwanda by'umwe ariko societe afrika ndetse n'isi muri rusange ni imishinga rero itandukanye ndetse iri mu byiciro cyangwa sectors zitandukanye zirimo izubuzima uburezi ikora na buhanga ari ryo byose bishingiyeho birumvikana Reka ngira ngo mbanyuremo imwe mu mishinga igera kuri 5 yabashe kugera kuri uyu munsi ikabigiye guhemberwa uh, kuba yaragaragaje kuzana impinduka ndetse n'udushya kurusha indi kuko batangiye mu kwezi kwa 11 kuri mwaka wa 2021 ari mishinga igera kuri 400 uyu munsi hasigaye imishinga 5 n'urugendo rutari rworoshye birumvikana no guhatana ndetse nkuko umunyamwanga uhoraho muri ministeri uh, ikora na buhanga na innovation yabikomojeho uh, bagiye banahabwa amahugurwa atandukanye kuri iyo mishinga yabo reka duhere kuri uyu mushinga uwitwa igitego Angelo uyu igitego Angelo ajya gutekereza kuri uyu mushinga we wo guca impapuro mu bitaro kwa muganga aho ya yaje kuba yarafite ikibazo yarafite umwana ajya kwa muganga umwana aza uh, kwita imana kiruruhinja ariko ahabona ikibazo gikomeye kijyanye n'umwanya yaba baganga ndetse nabari ababyaza bari kwa muganga bita ku babyeyi babyaye bahuraga nacyo cyo kumara umwanya munini bari mu mapuro bareba dokima asanga ni kibazo rero yaje gushutangiza uyu mushinga we uh, yise Karisimbi Technology uyu mushinga rero uyu igitego anjero ukaba ugamije kuza nikora na buhanga aho ibitaro amakuru yabarwayi mu bitaro ashyirwa mu ikora na buhanga ku buryo niba umuganga umunas cyangwa birumvikana umubyeyi yifuje uh, kureba ya makuru y'umurwayi we atirirwa ajya mu mapuro ahubwo ahita bibona mu ikora na buhanga kandi ya makuru agahuzwa ku buryo niba warivurije tuvuge ku rusumo uh, ukaza kujya kwivuriza mu ruhengeri umuganga ukuvuriye mu ruhengeri iyo yinjiye muri ya systeme uyu anjero igitego yatangije ahita bona ni nizini ni zira zose wanyuzemo muri bwa buvuzi bwawe wo rero numwe mu mishinga yageze kuri finali aramutsa higitsindi ngiye kuba nyuriramo nawe yatahana ama dollar ya America ibihumbi bitano ibihumbi 50 ni miliyoni manyarwanda zirenga 50 zizamwunganira kugira ngo arusheho gukuza uyu mushinga we undi muntu wagaragaje umushinga muri aba batanu no mwari umukobwa witwa Cyuzuzo Diane uyu Cyuzuzo Diane nawe umushinga we yabanje kugaragaza aho wakomotse yavuze ko iwabo ari abantu bagiye bakunda ibintu by'umuco nyarwanda ndetse umunsi umwe ngo uwe nabavandimwe be bavukana bakore urugendo aho bakomoka mu cyari wabo abasanga ababyeyi babo abasekuru na banyirakuru barakoresha ibikoresho gakondo ariko bamwe muri barumu nabo yicyuzuzo ibi bikoresho ni bari babizi babonaga gacuma bakibaza na gaki bakabona ibikoresho bitandukanye bya gakondo batumva ibya ribyo yagize rero igitekerezo cy'uburyo yakwifashisha ikora na buhanga ibi bikoresho gakondo bya Kinyarwanda agakomeza kubizana kugira ngo bitazibagirana nibwo yatangiye kujya afata bene ibi bikoresho gakondo akabikora mu bindi bikoresho bigezweho nka radio akabikoresha ama matara gafata nka gacuma hano yahagaragarije gacuma akora mu itara ko gacuma uragenda ugakora ho gusa itara rikaka wakoraho rikazima ni ikora na buhanga vuga ko uh, rimaze kugenda ryigarurira isoko kuko uh, nko mu bindi bikoresho bya gakondo hari byagenda akora mu radio izi radio zimaze kumengerwa zitwa bluetooth ushobora gukwifashisha telefone ya ukumvira wo muziki uh, ugasanga yabikoze ariko mu gikoresho nyarwanda ku buryo ukurikira wa muziki wa radio ariko bigafasha umwana kumenya gacumi cyari cyo ndetse nibindi bikoresho gakondo yavuze kuri ubu rero ko yamaze kubigeza ku isoko ndetse uh, benshi batangiye kubikunda biganjemo abanyarwanda baba mu mahanga diaspora ndetse nabakera rugendo bagenderera urwanda ariko akaba afite intego yuko naramuka atsindiye nka ya mafaranga nubundi ubufasha azagenda abona uh, kubikora bizamworohera ku buryo igiciro ku isoko kijya hasi ku buryo nabandi bose uh, bajya babikoresha ubwo ngubwo dukurikiye uri nyamasheke cyangwa mutundi turere tugize iki gihugu minsi mike ushobora kuzajya ucana itara rya gacuma kakozwe na cyuzuzo Diane ndetse n'ikintu abantu benshi bashimye 
Yo ni mishingi bili, muri maganane ya hata niraga, muri hanga, uh, pitch fest, makumi ya bili narimu. Eleka mbabugiru ndi mshingi waga tatu, nungu nyaru wanda witwa Mujisha Norman. Uyu Mujisha Norman, ya zanyu mshingi waitwa Afri Farmers Market. Uyuwe ya alimubu hinzi, na mbabugieko alimuri sekta, chango si bichiro bitandu kanye, abajie bafatikuwa na nabu hanga bakarijana muri jo bichiro, uh, liga tangi visu wizo bitari bihari. Ya garagashe kwa bahinzi, wasanga ga bahinga liko kujiza benjaho, isoko rihagaze, vichiro biliku isoko, aho bagurisha imisa umusaro wabo, ubu hinzi viru mbikana, jagora naga. Abachuru uza liko nabu, ugasanga bafita mafaranga liko niwazi, aheza masaka, Nibaza hezi bigori, nibaza hezi mnyumbati. Uh, nyamara hari, ndetse nabo babje sheshe, batazi aho wabigurisha. Nibigo rero ya tanjie, uyu mushinga yise Afri Farmers Market. Au kora terero. Aragenda, niburu muhinzi, uh, karebibu ufite, akabishira mngikora na buhanga. Abachuru uzi wakabasha kumenya, wa musaruru ufite, batiri weba vahobari vaza kurewa. Hanyuma, na wabachuru uzi nabo, bitewe nabahinzi yagiye ahura nabo uh, bakabasha kumenya aheze imyaka runaka batiriwe bakora urugendo uh, akabihuza rero agajira ibiciro ibiciro fatizo birumvikana uh, bityo bikorohera yabo muhinzi yaba no mucuruzi uh, kubasha gukora ubwo bucuruzi bwe uh, ndetse na muhinzi na akabasha kugurisha umusaruro we atiriwe uh, ava aho ari reka mbabwira umushinga wa kane Muri mishinga itanu, itegereje mukanya gatoya kuza guhabwa ibihembo. No mushinga w'umunyarwanda wundu kiri muto witwa Bergoire Andre. Bergoire Andre yashinze uh, societe itwa Second Life Storage. Uyu Andre rero we yatekereje uh, uyu mushinga nyuma yo kubona ikibazo cyari cyugarije isi cya za battery. Battery yabizi modoka za mudasobwa ndetse nibindi aho wasangaga zijugunwa zigifite ubushobozi bungana na mirongo irindwi na gatanu ku ijana abyo kuba azakomeza gukoreshwa amaze kubona icyo kibazo rero ayifashishije ubunararibonye ndetse n'ubushakashatsi n'ubumenyi butandukanye yagiye yigira ku bindi bigo bikomeye birimo nibyo mu Buyapani nibwo yatangije yatangije second life storage aho bafata ya battery ya maze gusaza bakayisazura abakongera kuyiha ubuzima ikongera gukora kandi giye kirekire aho kugira ngo ijugunwe nyamara yari gifite ubushobozi bwo kuba yakora yagaragaje rero ko mu gihe ibyo bishobotse abashiye kugara ubuzima bwa ya battery birinda no kujugunwa ikaba yakwangiza ibidukikije ifashe imibare yagiye agaragaza uburyo iki kibazo cyo kujugunya izi battery cyagiye akigira ingaruka ku bidukikije muri rusange undi mushinga wa gatanu twihuse mu mishinga magana biri yatangiye muri yihinga pitch fest bibiri na rimwe bibiri na 21 na rimwe mu kwezi kwa 10 na kumwe kuyu mwaka ni bug innovation iyingi ni umunyarwanda witwa Ntwari Yusufu Ntwari Yusufu yasanze ikiye kibazo ku isoko yasanze ikiye kibazo muri societe nyarwanda ndetse n'icyugarije isi muri rusange ni kibazo cy'ubushomeri aho usanga na hanini yagaragaje ko kigenda kinategwa nuko nabanyeshuri barangiza za kaminuza usanga badafite ubumenyi buhagije cyangwa busabwa ku isomo ry'umurimo uyu rero yatangije iyi societe yise Bug Innovations aho ahuza za kaminuza ndetse nabafite za societe bashaka gutanga kazi cyangwa ibigo yabi bya leta yabivyigenga byifuza gutanga kazi kubakozi aba Ia maze kuba huza, ifashishi bug innovations, ababanyi ya shuri baranji je uh, zaka minuza, uh, basha kira mahugurugwa, uh, atuma ubumenyi bwabo uh, buhura n’ubukenewe ku isoko ndetse akana basha kuba huza, uh, na baba chenei. Na baba koresha, bifuza wakozi, uh, baka basha kuwa na wakozi vizeye, uh, kubera kuwa baba hawe ni bug innovation, ya maze kubare mamo, kuba bakozi koko bakenewe kandi batanga ibisubizo cyangwa umusaruro kuri ibyo bigo n'amasosiyete atandukanye aba abakeneye 
ubu rero icyo twababwira nuko mu kanya gato katarambiranye haza kumenyekana umushinga wa mbere wa kabiri wa gatatu wa kane ndetse no wa gatanu gusa uko ari imishinga itanu yose ikaza guhembwa aho umushinga wa mbere uza guhembwa ko nabikomojeho ibihumbi 50 ibihumbi 50 by'amadolari ya America no kuvuga asaga miliyoni 50 amafaranga y'u Rwanda ndetse umushinga wa gatanu kaza kubona ibihumbi 12 muri aka kanya tuvugana abari bagize akanama nkemura mpaka aba judges bagiye kwiherera kugira ngo basesengure bashungure barebe umushinga wabo hahize indi hanyuma baze kwitangariza uh, birumvikana aba bari muri Kigali Arena namwe muri usange mukuri cyo televiziyo Rwanda tumenye abatsindiye uh, miri ibihumbi 500 by'amadolari ya America kugenda kugera ku bihumbi 12 muri aka kanya rero ikindi nababwira uh, mbere yo kugira ngo tuze kumva nyine abagize akanama nyemura maka icyo baza kutugezaho uh, nuko na naba baterani hano muri Kigali Arena biganje mu abanyeshuri baza kaminuza ndetse na za secondaire bishimiye cyane iki gikorwa ngaruka mwaka ni gikorwa kizahoraho aho buri mwaka azagenda hamenyekana imishinga myiza nkingiye munyemere rero tubanze turebe iyi video gatoya aya mashusho nayo nubundi ari muri uyu mujyo wi gahunda ya hanga pitch fest aho urubyiruko rutandukanye ndetse n'abahanga batandukanye bagenda babasangiza basangiza jumwe ari ko abakiri bato uburyo bwo kwihangira imirimo bakaba ibisubizo by'ibazo biri muri societe yabo mukanya gato turagaruka Many businesses are shutting down and, and businesses are really struggling. After realizing the impacts of COVID, I decided to, to venture into agribusiness activities. We tried our best to retain um, the employees that we have, help them and their families in the process. And we also donate clothes and shoes um, to children who cannot afford to. Business and ye, a chimarina when you're one, the Muru Sanje, it's Mobaba Beza, Bajira Bez. The African Management Institute provided lots of different tools. They are tools that give you a clear picture of where you are as a business, your profitability levels, um, how you're growing or how you're not growing. Those are tools that came when I really needed them. I gained skills of market strategies. The advice I would give to my fellow entrepreneurs is to think beyond the box and never to miss any chance that comes in their mind. I was able to get a lot of money from the this is a time to put our efforts together and work together to ensure that um, we thrive even during the pandemic. My name is Dale, I'm Rendon, and I'm currently pursuing my Master's in Engineering Artificial Intelligence at Carnegie Mellon University, Africa. From a young age, I had an interest in healthcare. While growing up, I saw technology being able to solve problems efficiently and faster. So I wanted to learn the skills that will help me combine both technology and healthcare and be able to solve the problems that Africa is facing. And CMU had the open doors for me to come and learn and harness the skills that will help me reach my goals. So some of it, the applications of uh, the picking place, for instance, is when you're, for instance, in a pharmaceutical company and you're producing or building drugs. So you can think of this as help us take things from one place to another, or keep maybe using this particular dosage 
of a particular aspect of the drug and then it's going to be doing it automatically. There are a lot of challenges in Africa that robots will be able to help us address, but there is a skill gap that we need to fill in order to be able to address those needs. CMU Africa is doing a good job in bridging that gap and preparing us to be the next roboticist that can be able to come and leverage what robots are all about in order to solve the problems that Africa is facing. I'm Raha Bwangare, a co-founder at Hepto Analytics Limited. I got my master's in information technology from Carnegie Mellon University, Africa, class of 2018. When I joined CMU Africa, I thought I was just going to focus on the very technical things when it comes to um, information technology. But CMU had prepared a curriculum where you are immersed in a 360 view of how you can use technology to actually solve uh, the problems that our society is facing. During COVID, we have seen that um, a lot of people were laid off and they had to rely on their talent actually to make a living. A lot of people started weaving basket, um, creative earrings, art, but they did not really have a platform to showcase their work. So as Heptal, we decided that these people are there, they have the talent, uh, they have the capability. What can we do to actually help them get a wider reach, increase their sales? we decided to develop Keza, a commerce technology helping small retailers uh, go digital. We wanna take these solutions to the rest of the world, basically share our knowledge and skills to the rest of Africa. We got this quality education and we are using it to create a ripple effect and solving problems all over Africa. Hunger Pitch Fest uh, is a competition uh, that is targeting startups where we're looking to identify uh, the different startups that we have across Rwanda, looking at the different ideas that they are building, but also offering them a platform where they can showcase the different uh, innovations that they are working on, offering them an opportunity to have um, you know, peer mentorship and mentorship with um, other different organizations. And at the same time, we're also looking to provide them with training and business development services. At the highlight of this competition is also uh, cash prizes that are targeted towards helping these businesses grow. Uh, what excites me about Rwanda's innovation culture is that it's more engaged within young people. Young people are taking the lead and everyone is trying to innovate and people are trying to catch up because I think COVID has taught us that we really need to be innovative. And you see most of young people are trying to, everyone has an idea, everyone has an, a creative and innovative idea. So that's really amazing. I think the future is much going to be much brighter. What excites me about the Rwandan innovation culture is that it's fast growing. There's a lot of uh, challenges that needs to be addressed here in Rwanda. So which gives a lot of room for us young entrepreneurs to come up with ideas and innovations that can actually contribute to the society, but also uh, create sustainable businesses. So beyond um, identifying this talent, um, we're also looking to, you know, categorize them because startups have different uh, growth stages. Um, you have those startups that are still at pre-seed level, you have those that are at seed level, and those that have uh, matured enough, they already have a prototype in place, they already have um, put their products and services on the market. And so being able to look at the different um, segments of uh, startups that they're in, and then... Public of Rwanda, Paul Kagame. Thank you. Your Excellency, thank you very much for joining us. Distinguished guests, tech enthusiasts, welcome to Hunger Pitch Fest 2020.
2021. It's a tech startup festival that provides a unique platform to showcase tech entrepreneurs and creative talents from all over the country, as well as giving them platforms that will enable them to showcase their talents and connect them with the markets in Rwanda. My name is Arthur Musi, and I'm working with my co-host today. And I'm Nancy Ndekwe. Your Excellency, I would like to invite the Minister of ICT and Innovation, Honorable Paula Ingabire, to give her remarks. Your Excellency, the President of the Republic of Rwanda, cabinet members, senior government officials, um, to our phenomenal uh, panel of judges that has been fantastic this whole afternoon, and most especially to the startups that are the reason we are here today. Good evening. I'd like to start by thanking everyone for making the time to join us today uh, during this Hunger Pitch Fest competition, which has been going on for more than six weeks when we sent out a call of applications, received more than 400 applications, and shortlisted to where today we have the top five that have emerged as the best uh, startups. But in as much as we have them as the best five startups, I think for all the 25, the 45, the 340 that had the courage to apply and really uh, compete during this competition, we consider all of you as winners and you're the brain power that our country needs to take us to the next level. <clears throat> Your Excellency, we had um, the opportunity to listen to some of the top five uh, startups that presented here this afternoon, and shortly we will be hearing from the judges uh, the job wasn't easy for them, but to really get to know who were some of the winners and how they rank from first uh, to fifth. I also want to take this opportunity uh, to thank the judges that have really been part of this. Beyond the five judges that were here with us this afternoon, we've had judges from across the industry that have been part and parcel of making sure we do the selection, we uh, give these entrepreneurs and innovators the best advice to fine tune their ideas, and we can't thank you enough on behalf of all the judges that have been part of this. <clears throat> Mr. President, as we gather here um, this evening, I think it's a call to action for all of us. What we've seen is brilliant and amazing ideas, but there's also a need to continue to support them. They can't walk this entrepreneurial journey alone, and they're going to need all of us whether it's the advice we give them, whether it's the data we open up to them so that they have relevant solutions, whether it's the money that they need to take them to the next level, I think everyone in this room has a role to play in taking them to the next level. So as I end my remarks, I wanted to take this opportunity to thank you because if it wasn't for you, um, for really believing in the young people that are here today, uh, giving them a reason uh, to make a difference in this country's, uh, in contributing to the country's growth, we wouldn't be here today, and it's because of you that we're here today. And I ask everyone in the room to join me in thanking the president for this commitment. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Honorable Minister. I would love to introduce a video that also gives us an overview and takes us through the journey of Hunger Beach Fest. Hunger Beach Fest uh, is a competition uh, that is targeting startups where we're looking to identify uh, the different startups that we have across Rwanda, looking at the different ideas that they are building, but also offering them a platform where they can showcase the different uh, innovations that they are working on, offering them an opportunity to have um, you know, peer 
mentorship and mentorship with um, other different organizations. And at the same time, we're also looking to provide them with training and business development services. What we do at Afri Farmers Market, uh, we use uh, technology to empower uh, rural farmers of a camp poverty through helping them access stable market using e-commerce and also uh, giving them sustainable skills on how to practice modern agriculture. My name is Yusuf Mwadi and I'm the CEO of Ag Innovation. We're an education technology company uh, that is aiming at providing experience-based learning to university students to complement theoretical learning with market-relevant experience. At Karisimbi Technology Solutions, we provide an electronic medical records software that helps uh, hospitals to operate paperlessly. That means we provide to them uh, digital patient files for their patients. We are giving a new utility to the Rwandan cultural tools by transforming them into smart home devices by using technology and the shapes of Rwandan cultural tools securing them a spot in the future of Internet of Things devices. Our company is Second Life Storage. We build energy storage solutions from uh, battery waste and provide them as a service to uh, many segments, including uh, telecom towers, industries, and commercial buildings. I believe that competitions like this will create an ecosystem that uh, will be very advantageous to the country because uh, more and more ideas will come out from uh, new sources that uh, we were not exposed to before. Uh, in other countries like Israel, for example, those, uh, this type of competitions is uh, something that helped ignite the startup uh, ecosystem, which eventually turned uh, into a, Israel is known as the startup nation, and I would love for Rwanda to be the startup nation of Africa as well. I would now like to welcome on stage the head of UNDP Rwanda, one of our lead partners in the ICT sector, Mr. Maxwell Gomera. Thank you very much. Your Excellency, President of the Republic of Rwanda, cabinet members here present, our wonderful judges, and our brilliant and innovative young people, ladies and gentlemen, excellencies, Mwiriwe. Your Excellency, Nitwa Maxwell Gomera, Magararie UNDP Murgwanda. About a year ago, Your Excellency, I arrived in this beautiful country. And as a sign of the times, the extraordinary times that we live in, my first encounter at the airport was with a robot called Umururi, Urumuri. Your Excellency, I learned that the robot was being used to treat people in hospitals, to deliver medicines, and to protect frontline staff. The robot is a sign of the innovation and the power of innovation that's abundant in this country. Congratulations, Your Excellency. But as we saw this afternoon, the story of the robot doesn't end there. This afternoon, we saw young people displaying their ideas of how they see the future. It has not always been easy for them, Your Excellency. Many of them do not, do not succeed, and some don't come up with profitable businesses. But they do not give up. And it was wonderful to see the young people that you have here who have refused to give up and are going on with their ideas. Your Excellency, what we are seeing in Rwanda is not happening by accident. 
it has happened because of three key attributes that we are seeing in your country. The first one is your leadership. Your leadership, Excellency, has created an environment where people can apply themselves. Congratulations for that. The second one is the presence of young and vibrant young people with a curious mind and who are prepared to take risk. In my country and in my culture, we say the Chakata fruit on the ground belongs to everyone, but the one on the tree belongs to she who is prepared to climb. <clears throat> Climbing the Chakata tree is hard work, and the young people that we saw today have been able to climb that tree. It is our responsibility and our duty to help them to keep at the top of their game. The third one, Your Excellency, is the availability of an ecosystem of services that help anyone and everyone who wants to invest in this beautiful country. From the services that we see from the Rwanda Development Bank, uh, Development Board, the KIFC, Your Excellency, the many uh, accelerator labs that we see in this country, you have created an ecosystem of services that makes it easy for any investor who would like to do so. Congratulations once again. As UNDP and with many of the partners who have sponsored this event, we are proud to be associated with young people who are prepared to excel themselves and to be associated with your government. We, we would like to continue working with you to take this forward, Your Excellency. I also learned, Your Excellency, that we share a passion for us in our football club. And I hope that one day we'll be able to watch a match together. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you so much, Mr. Gomera. We would now like to welcome to the stage the chairman of the Rwandan Development Board, Mr. Itzak Fisher, to give his remarks. So unfortunately, I will not be able to say some words in the uh, local Rwandan language, but I will work on it, I promise. <laughs> so whoever doesn't know me, I'm uh, Itzhak Fischer, I'm uh, the chairman of RDB, and my journey to Rwanda started five years ago when I met His Excellency in New York when he came to visit the UN mission. And that is the meeting that changed everything for me because I expected a 15-minute meeting, taking pictures, I'm going to leave, and it is as if the meeting never happened. And what His Excellency did is, actually, I sat down, he sat me down for an hour, and we discussed my life and what I've done in my life. And then the question was very simple, how can you help Rwanda? And then he invited me to come for a trip in Rwanda to see how I can help. And I committed that every three months I'm going to come and see how I can help. And <laughs> And from that, it rolled into, a year later, into me becoming the chairman of RDB, working together with Claire, the best partner that I could ever have. <laughs> and during the last five years, I was focusing on bringing foreign investors, visiting businesses in Rwanda, and I always kept thinking, like His Excellency said many times, a lot of his speeches, that the future is in the young people of Rwanda. And how do we unleash the power of the young people of Rwanda to change the economy? 
And I believe that from, I, I thought it would be a small, humble start of a startup competition. It turned into an amazing event, so it's not such a humble start. But since this event is going to be now a yearly event where I personally contributed money for the event to succeed, I think that this event will be the, the event that will ignite what I called in, this, in the words that I said here before, startup nation of Africa. Now, I, I, my people don't know, but I, my profession is investing in early stage companies. So my wife that is hiding somewhere in the crowd because I'm not allowed to point her out, and I invested in over 100 companies in the last 20 years. And I must say that the ideas that we heard from the five young people blew me away because they focus on the critical areas of health and food and nutrition, and those are the areas that we would like young people to come with great ideas so we, the whole economy can benefit from that. So again, I'm very excited to be here. I'm very excited for this competition and even more excited for next year competition. Thank you. Thank you very much. And now, the moment we've all been waiting for is here. Yes. We've waited so long to know who is going to be the Hunger Pitch Fest champion and who is walking away with 50,000 US dollars. The judges, they've deliberated and they have the final results. Am I right? Yes. As we rehearsed, we are going to be awarding starting from the fifth place. Nancy, I know you were excited about this. Oh, I can't wait. Take it on. Are you guys ready? To award the fifth and fourth place, I would like to invite Honorable Minister Paula Ngawire, joined by UNDP Representative Mr. Maxwell Gomera, to please come on stage. And I'm going to be announcing the winner. I've just received all their names. In fifth place, the winner is mm -hmm. it's loading the winner is Karisimbi Technology Solutions <laughs> please come and take a picture this is a good moment. He goes home with 12,500 US dollars to invest in his business. Thank you very much. And in fourth place, in fourth place, the winner is Bob. Bag. He also goes home with 12,500 as an investment in his business and a good smart solution that he pitched today. Congratulations. To award the third and second place, I would like to ask RDB CEO Claire Akamanzi, joined by the country director of Allen and Jill Gray Philanthropy through the program of Jasiri, Aline Kabanda to please take the stage. And my job is to break the news, which I'm loving. 
In third place, the winner is Afri Farmers. Afri Farmers presented a beautiful idea, and to that reason, he goes home with 15,000 US dollars, an investment in his brilliant tech solution. Two are remaining, and one of them is going to be crowned the overall champion of Hangar Pitch Fest. In second place, the winner is Second Life Storage. Well, I'm pretty much you understand what that means. By knowing the second, you know the first. But the second also goes home with an amount equivalent to 20,000 US dollars cash. And now, the moment we've all been waiting for. We can hear your excitement. We would like... Thank you very much. And now, to award the first place winner, we would like to invite His Excellency Paul Kagame, joined, joined by the chairman of RDB, Mr. Itzhak Fisher, to give the first award. I don't think I have to announce the winner, because you know, and the winner is Afri Duna! She walks away with 50,000 US dollars cash to invest in her business. She brought a brilliant idea of packaging our culture with modern technology and music. She is the winner. She is the crown champion of Hunger Pitch Fest 2021. Ladies and gentlemen, one more time. Let's give a round of applause to Afri Duna. Congratulations to all. We will now invite all our winners and esteemed awardees to take a group photo to mark this exciting occasion, after which we shall have the keynote remarks from His Excellency. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, we can now take back our seats. Thank you, Your Excellency. It is now my distinct honor to welcome Your Excellency, the President of the Republic of Rwanda, to come and deliver your remarks. Thank you. Hello. A good evening to all of you. I would have spoken without a piece of paper in my hand, but uh, since I'm uh, meeting very important people, the young people, the winners of today, and uh, the other people, but very important, who are here, especially those who made uh, this event possible. Uh, my job is mainly to acknowledge uh, all of you and uh, I want to uh, mention uh, people's names. 
So I don't uh, want to forget any name. So that's why I have uh, a piece of paper in my hands. But definitely, I'm just uh, thrilled, very pleased uh, to be here joining you for this very happy moment and having had uh, all you had today, uh, I join you uh, in recognizing the five uh, startups that have been uh, have received the awards in this first ever event of uh, hunger uh, pitch fest so i i thank for i thank the diplomats who are here guests from uh, across the world I thank you for joining us and also for being part of uh, uh, this very beautiful day. This is a very interesting and excellent initiative. And I commend all institutions uh, involved as well as the youth who have spent the day here learning about entrepreneurship and innovation. Uh, and as I said earlier, this is just the beginning, so I think more is going to be done and more is going to be achieved as we go forward. So let me acknowledge the generous sponsors who have made this event possible. They include Ishak Fisher, chairperson of the Rwanda Development Board, UNDP, uh, represented here by Mr. Maxwell Gomera, the Jasiri program of the Ellen and Jill Gray Philanthropy, Katie Rwanda Networks. I'm sure there are others uh, probably I didn't uh, put on my list, but I'm aware they want to be added on the list uh, by the next uh, event we hold here. <laughs> so I welcome them and I congratulate them, uh, congratulate them in advance as well. Uh, numerous uh, other associate partners have made uh, notable contributions. I go back to the finalists. I congratulate uh, you all. I hope you are as proud uh, as we are for you. Technology and innovation are driving Rwanda's transformation. Not enough yet. So that's why I want more of it. I want to do more. Because if you want to drive the economy based on knowledge, which is very important, and by the way, which is available in any part of the world you go to. 
It just uh, depends on how you are ready to tap into that. Uh, the difference will be made by how you focus on it, you invest in it, and the seed uh, with the, that importance it holds. Uh, the Hunger, Hunger Pitch Fest has equipped all those who participated with the new tools uh, to help you grow your companies. I want to encourage you uh, to take full advantage of the programs and the services in our country to help uh, start up entrepreneurs succeed. I want to single out an example of uh, Norskin, East Africa, which just launched a health tech hub and we offer 20 Rwandan startups a platform to solve some of Africa's health challenges. Congratulations and uh, we appreciate that contribution. More public-private partnerships will be needed to accelerate the growth of this ecosystem, in particular in higher education and research. The most successful startups are rooted in science, research, and technology. In all advanced economies, eventually which we want ours to be, the linkages between universities and entrepreneurship are deep and productive. In Africa, it's not going to be any different. <clears throat> to all the sponsors and partners here with us today, once again, I would like to take this opportunity to thank you for your commitment and all resources and your time you put into this. We still have a long way to go, but let's continue working together to see tangible results. I would wish for the finalists great success going forward. You have all our full support, including those who did not succeed. We want them to succeed next time. So I wish you a very happy evening. And uh, please uh, be and stay safe and let's work hard going forward. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you so much, Your Excellency. To cover two years of Kumuso, Zou Yumunsi. Mujihe Jinshi Javuzgue, Twise Jinshi, Trashaka Gushimira in Sinzi Zose Zavaye, Kandi, Mese Murihano, Numa Nyama Fashe, Koza Muri, Hanga, Pitch Fest 2021. Well, as Nancy said it, we've learned a lot, starting from the different booths that we visited, listening to different entrepreneurs, opportunities that we got. Most of you took notes, which I liked 
but we've come to an end of this event. We are looking forward to the next edition, and I am sure everyone who's here is ready to pitch next year. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you very much. Thank you, Your Excellency. We have now come to an end of today's program. Thank you. Mu gihe abashitsi bakuru bari gusoka turasaba abandi kuba mwicaye. Thank you, Your Excellency, esteemed guests, and everybody that came out today. Thank you very much. Nkuko twabivuze rero tubafitiye agashi. Umuhango rero waberaga hano muri Kigali Arena ukaba ugeze ku musozo ni Hanga Fest Pitch Fest 2021 yabaye ku nshuro ya mbere ibihembo bimaze gutangwa ndetse no mukuru w'igihugu amaze kugeza ubutumwa ku rubyiruko ku mbaga y'urubyiruko rwa Rutera ni hano muri Kigali Arena Muri make cyo nabibutsa bijyanye no butumwa mu kuri w'igihugu ageje kuri urugiruko yongeye kubibutsa ko ikora na buhanga ari wo musingi w'impinduka ndetse n'iterambere urwanda rukomeje guharanira bityo ababwira ko imaze kugerwaho bishimishije ariko kandi bidahagije ngira ngo icyo nicyo bukibumbatiye ubutumwa bw'umukuru w'igihugu ndetse no gushimira abafatanye bikorwa batandukanye bageze uruhare mu kugira ngo iki gikorwa kibashe kuba guhera mu kwezi kwa 11 mu gihe cy'ibyumweru bitanu tu batoranya iyi mishinga itanigeze kuri finali mu mishinga irenga maganane yahatanye nabibutsa gusa ko uh, ku mwanya wa gatanu haje Karisimbi Technology ariyo yegukanye umwanya wa gatanu uh, watangije uyu mushinga rero akaba atahanye amadorari ya America ibihumbi 12 na 500 ubwo ni hafi miliyoni 13 mu mafaranga y'u Rwanda Undi mushinga wegukanye igihembo ku mwanya wa kane ni bug ikaba yegukanye ibihumbi 12 na 500 nayo ya madorari ya Amerika ni hafi miliyoni 13 yavunje amafaranga y'u Rwanda mu gihe ku mwanya wa gatatu haje Afri Farmers uyu ni wa mushinga ujyanye ni kora buhanga ariko mu buhinzi wegukanye amadorari ya Amerika ibihumbi 15 mu gihe ku mwanya wa kabiri haje Second Life Storage wegukanye ibihumbi 20 by'amadorari ya Amerika uyu kabuje anye no kongera kunagura uh, battery cyangwa se kongera kuzikorera kuziha ubundi buzima nyumwa yuko wenda uh, zishaje umushinga rero wegukanye umwanya wa mbere muri hanga pitch fest 2021 no mukobwa cyuzuzo Diane uyu nguyu ni wa wundi wa hisemo gutangiza umushinga ujyanye no kwifashisha ibikoresho gakondo bya Kenyarwanda akongera kubibyaza umusaruro yifashisha ikora na buhanga birimo ibyo twabwiye nk'uducuma duhindurwa amatara ndetse nibindi bikoresho gakondo agenda koreshamo ibindi bikoresho mu buryo bugezweho akabasha kubikundisha ndetse no kubiha ubuzima buzahoraho mu ruhererekane ruguru byiruko yavuze ko cyane cyane yagiye abona ikibazo cy'urugiriko rugenda kwibagirwa ibyo bikoresho gakondo ngira ngo rero naha tusoreje gahunda ya hanga pitch fest bina 2021 tubashimira mwese mwabanye natwe mu izina rya equipe ngari yose yamfashije aba kuri kamera kuri technique na handi bose kugira ngo uyu muhango bashe kugera ku gatano kuri gatano reka tubifurize kugira umugoro wa mwiza ndetse no gukomeza kunogerwa n'izindi gahunda za televiziyo rwanda ko nazo zirakomeje